WGBH Sports presents, live from the Civic Center in Providence, Rhode Island, the 31st National Collegiate Athletic Association Division I Ice Hockey Championship. It's Boston College versus Boston University tonight here at the Civic Center for the championship of the United States. An all-Boston final, something that Boston coaches and Eastern College hockey representatives have dreamed of for some 31 years, and it's finally come about. Hi, everybody. I'm John Carlson here at the Civic Center with Harvard coach Bill Cleary to bring you all the action and play-by-play -play of tonight's game, the Battle of Commonwealth Avenue, which has expanded beyond its normal scope and into the national picture because tonight a champion will be crowned in an interesting event, certainly indeed, Bill Cleary. Well, I think everyone is looking forward to this, John, and uh, well, you can put the past season's records behind because in this type of a game, emotion is so important, and I think both teams are going to come out so sky high that... Uh, I won't be, won't be, su be surprised at anything. <laughs> well, I tell you one thing. We're going to look for a very intense hockey game, and we talked about the records uh, just briefly. But why don't we see just exactly what those records mean and exactly what has happened so far this season. As the Boston College Eagle swoops around the ice, the Boston College NCAA tournament, 10 years in, and as you can see, they've uh, come up with a rather poor percentage as far as wins and losses are concerned here in the national championship scene. And uh, I don't know if that's indicative of what could happen here tonight, Bill. Well, I don't know, but of course, they were the first decent team to win it back in 1949. In fact, I was talking to Bernie Burke, who was the goaltender in that team, along with Lenny Siglaski, so uh, uh, they still are one of the few Eastern teams to have won it, so... Uh, I'm sure they're uh, very optimistic, uh, despite what the NCAA record is. Well, they've won 24 games and lost nine coming in. And uh, on your screens at home, you can see just exactly how they got this far through the EC AC tournament quarterfinals. They defeated a hot-shooting RPI team, a team that, that runs and guns, and they can really score. It was an overtime battle, a tough one, but Boston College pulled it out by a goal, then went on to defeat Brown and Providence to take the championship of the East and what was a surprise because that team at the bottom, Providence, was the club that knocked Boston University off in the first game. They also knocked Cornell off in the, uh, in the quarterfinal game up at uh, Ithaca, which is no uh, easy task itself. And, uh... and uh, here we see Boston University's record in the NCAA tournament and certainly uh, uh, a 458 percentage, not bad, with a dozen years in the tournament. Uh, their one lost record is still on the minus side, but uh, a little bit heavier, certainly, than that of Boston College. BU had a great season this year. They lost to Yale, and they lost to Providence in the tournament. And as you see their march through the quarterfinals, they had a very difficult time with the Wildcats of New Hampshire and had to go into overtime to squeeze that one out, Bill. Yes, they did. In fact, uh, New Hampshire came on very strong at the end, and uh, I think it tells a lot about Eastern hockey, though, John. The uh, teams are becoming so uh, much more uh, proficient. Uh, the bottom teams, the so-called bottom teams a few years ago are now pretty good teams, and they're giving everyone a bad time. So you can't go into any game without uh, with thinking you're going to just walk through it. Boston University against Boston College over the years uh, has the edge, 63-54-6, uh, and six. And that's the way it looks as they come into this game. Boston University uh, did lose to Providence in the semifinal round of the ECACs. Then they beat Brown pretty handily, 8-4, to four, in the, the final game of that tournament for them, and then uh, had to go to a playoff. And that uh, playoff may have been beneficial. As a matter of fact, I think it was for Boston University. They got the opportunity to have intense practice sessions for a week went to Providence, played them on their home ice, and they had to fight for that victory. Providence College, a team that came on very strong at the end of the season, and uh, that fight probably made them a better club coming into this tournament. Well, though. I think so. You know, uh, in the past, the East have gone two weeks without playing a game, and this is the first year that they've exercised that playoff game, the first round NCAA playoff game, and uh, perhaps it has uh, made BU a little bit sharper. They were... You know, they had such a great year, and I think they just kind of leveled off a little at the end, and now they're coming on real strong, and perhaps that one game did a lot for them. I, I would think so. And then a, another club that came on strong, the Eagles of Boston oh. College. Goodness well. gracious, there was a time during the course of the uh, middle of the season, as you see the Eagles now taking their pregame skate. Uh, the Eagles had a little bit of trouble, but injuries had caused, uh, I think, a heavy toll, Bill. Well, I think injuries did take uh, a heavy toll on... Boston College, uh, when you lose the 
uh, a personnel uh, of a Paul Skidmore and uh, people like that, it's bound to hurt. Uh, I know ourselves, we lost quite a few hockey players this year and, uh, you know, I think a lot of credit is due BC because they overcame all those injuries and they're still right here tonight. That's right. Len Seglarski, their coach, deserves a lot of credit for hanging in there. He didn't let it get him down and he, you didn't hear him belly aching a whole lot about his problems. He was going out, taking his lumps, knowing that there was a chance when he got back uh, people like Skip House and Charlie Antitomaso that uh, he was going to be in better shape and it turned out that way for him. Well I think he had every right to feel that way because you know they started out very strong when they had all their players. Uh, they were one of the top teams early in the season and until the injuries hit them so I think they had reason to be optimistic and it's uh, proven themselves right now. We have both teams on the ice. The red of Boston University and they are in the solid color uniforms. The white maroon and gold of Boston College and there uh, you can see on the sideline the Terriers of BU lining up for the introductions to start this evening's event 14 of the 22 players on the Boston University roster have played in at least one NCAA tournament so they're not uh, unused to this action Jack Parker pacing as uh, he will all through this <laughs> hockey game in his player bench and Jackie's known to walk a little. I guess all our all coaches are get excited on the bench, and uh, it's pretty hard not to, especially in this game, John. There's so much uh, at stake, and uh... we're introducing players here at the Civic Center now on the blue line: Dick Lambie and Jack O'Callahan. Jack O'Callahan, number 17; Lambie, number 23. The defenseman: Bob Wallow. And Tony Mahar, along with Mark Hetnick, will be the forwards. And there you have the starting skating unit. In goal will be Jim Craig. And he skates out to the ice now. He started against Wisconsin. He's a hot goaltender, 15-0 his record so far for the season. There's Jim heading now to the goal. Uh, he's the guy that did it for them against Wisconsin on Thursday night. And he got the call again tonight. The rest of the Boston University Terriers line up on their blue line and now the Boston College Eagles. Joe Augustine, number three from Chicago, starting at defense along with number 15, George Amadon from International Falls, Minnesota. Paul Hammer, number 11 from Aurora, Minnesota. Joe Mullen, the explosive winger from New York City and Bill Army who's home here in Providence, Rhode Island tonight, will center that line. And here's Paul Skidmore, some kind of goaltender. I think he's one of the outstanding goaltenders in college hockey, not just the East. And uh, he put on a great show, I thought, last night uh, against Bowling Green. And uh, when BC made any lapses, he was there to help them. And now, our national anthem. here at the Providence Civic Center expected to be capacity tonight people are still filing into their seats for the drop of the puck and the opening of the 1978 NCAA championship game well I'm sure everyone is excited in here as I am and uh, we're looking forward to a great hockey game is going to see some explosive uh, scoring punch on both teams John uh, I think that I they had to break up the line of Barrett Mullen and uh, Billy Army but uh, early in the season that was probably as fine a line as it was in the country and of course BU I think one of their strengths is their depth 
they have four lines that come at you and I think Jack has used four lines more in the latter part of the season and the other night against uh, Wisconsin I was very impressed with uh, their fourth line with Johnson and Carter and uh, and Melanson and I thought they were one of the keys to their victory the other night they keep coming at you I think is the byword uh, oh, Bill you said too. it and they just keep coming and coming and coming until they get you around the third period but Boston College is a team that can put the puck in the net as they showed last night we're underway Mark Hetnick number four cut down at the blue line we've got our first penalty of the hockey game called by Joe Fawcett that call is going to put Boston University on the power play and it comes at just nine seconds of the first period. You know, this is one of the things that uh, any coach, when he plays against Boston University, is uh, fearful of is uh, their power play because they've executed this so well over the years, John, that, uh, you know, they throw the puck around very well. They shoot the puck well from the points. And it was too bad. I think he just caught uh, Joe flat-footed. It came so quickly off the faceoff. Time of the penalty, nine seconds. Joe Augustine going to the penalty box. And it's going to be for holding. Boston University on the power play. They've converted just about 32% of their power play chances so far this season. And here they come, seeing what they can do on this one. John Bethel, number nine, breaks into the zone. He's looking to set it up, cruises behind the net. Back out to the point now to O'Callaghan. Swings at left point. Lambie drops it off. Fiddler scores! Mike Fiddler. Say Mark Fiddler, number 12, pumps home the first goal in the first minute of play. Well, I think uh, there's a true uh, picture of a BU power play. They're very deliberate. They get in and set the set the play up, and uh, they throw that puck over to the middle point, Dick Lambie, and then he just either shoots or slides it over to the off wing, which is Mark Fiddler in this instance, and he was left unguarded and shot the puck past Paul Skidmore. And there you have it. The time of the goal is just 38 seconds. It's on the power play. One to nothing, Boston University. Mark Fiddler from Lambie and O'Callaghan. And we're underway with a BU advantage early in the game. Last night, Boston College scored in the first minute of play at 28 seconds to get the advantage over Bowling Green. I think that uh, set Bowling Green back a little bit psychologically in that game. So we're going to have to see what it does here. Well, I think it can, it can work both ways, John. You know, the... Uh, to Sometimes you get an early goal like that and things come a little too easy and uh, it yeah. can be detrimental. You take a coffee break and uh, that can hurt you. Skidmore stops it behind his own net. Number 17 is Skip House. Swings it out to the right and gets it right back as the four checkers for BU give him trouble. Set up by LeBlanc in the slot, but it's tossed right back out of the zone and by Boston University's Mark Hetnick. So the Terriers are going to have to start it all over again. Winding it up, it's dumped into the zone by Hetnick. Boston University taking the opportunity here to change up and the Eagles working to get it out through center ice by Bobby Hare and all the way back into the BU end. That's icing. So they'll bring it back for the face off to the right of Paul Skidmore. Well I think uh, they're a little on edge right now which is expected. Uh, this is the first game for a lot of these boys in an NCAA championship final and uh, you know they made a few bad passes coming out of their end but they did that last night against Bowling Green and I think they came along stronger as the game went on. All set for the drop of the puck. Mark Fiddler's goal, by the way, is 29th. He's only a freshman and an outstanding year. Matter of fact, what kind of totals he's got. 29, 35, 64 points so far in this season. And now it's Boston College trying to get something going. Dumped in on Jim Craig. O'Callaghan behind his own cage starts it out. Jack O'Callaghan, junior co-captain of the Terriers, dumps it in to the Boston College end. EU trying to set up right point. O'Callaghan fires. That was deflected out in front, but it was wide, obviously. Battle for the puck in behind the net. Down in a heap goes three. Now it's Lambie dropping it back to O'Callaghan. The drive is deflected wide by Augustine, who got a stick down upon it. Still Boston University pressing. Skidmore save. You know, that was a very big save. Skidmore had to get the skate out and stop that one at point blank range. And now the Eagles mounting a one man attack with Walter Kyle in the zone and he's broken up crossing the line. Now we've got a whistle in the play and something coming up right here. There's a penalty there on Dick Lambie. He's coming in the zone when he 
held the Boston College flair. It'll be uh, Dick Lambie for hooking. He got a piece of Walter Kyle was making a one man attack for BC. They haven't been able to mount so far in the first almost three minutes of this game a sustained hunk of attack. But they're going to get an opportunity here to exercise their power play. Well they've had a good power play all year long too. Uh, John and we'll be interested to see how they set it up in this early going. Well they're offside in the first couple of seconds of it so they'll start it all over from the special spot center ice. Big thing I think now for Boston College is not to get excited just take their time and be patient uh, in the power play and wait for their good shot. Bill Army number 16 will take the draw for Boston College. He punches it into the zone. Army along the wing board now looks to set it up tries to go left point that's deflected out of the zone. A good stick by Mark Hetnick. He's a workhorse for Boston University. An excellent hard working hockey player. I thought uh, Mark played an outstanding game against Wisconsin. His penalty killing was uh, excellent. Uh, one of the keys to the BU victory. Uh, and he's been doing this all year. He's actually, in fact he's been doing it as long as he's been playing with Boston University. A very underrated hockey player John. Joe Fawcett drops the puck and we're back underway as LeBlanc throws it along the blue line. 138 remaining now the penalty to Lambie and of course in the power play for Boston College and the puck is dumped right back into the Eagles end so they'll have to start it out from there. Minute and a half to go now in the power play Augustine number three. The center ice dumps it in and the Eagles fly in after it Mullins scooting behind the cage puck moved out of there. Eagles still controlling coming back to Hammer Hammer shoots. Craig saves Hammer again. That one is knocked down in front. Here's Augustine left point drive. Whoa! Kicked wide. Picked off the wing board by Hetnick. Dumps it back out to center ice. We got a run on here. Hard of the zone. He fires. That was deflected by Augustine wide of Skidmore. So the Eagles started again. Now with 55 seconds left in the power play. Boston College has converted just about 30 percent of their power play opportunities this year. Craig covers the puck, and we're going to have a draw in the BUN. Anytime you convert on 30 percent, you're doing very well in any league, John. Uh, I know ourselves, we would love to have been at uh, 30 percent this year, but, uh, you know, it's becoming harder. Uh, uh, we're working more and more in power plays uh, these days uh, and to defense against them, and it's not an easy task, believe me. Uh. Now we see the efficiency of both of these clubs uh, BU with an efficiency ratio of over 30 Mullen picks it up at center ice he hustles back in his own end and the four checker Melanson is in there tight on him Melanson has scored two shorthanded goals this season for Boston University but they haven't done too well in uh, picking that uh, side of the ledger up matter of fact they've had uh, some scored against them seven while they've scored only two and Melanson has both of them Puck is swept out of the zone by BU. Obviously, they uh, they do a little bit better on penalty killing. Well, they've done very well. Uh, in fact, he uses two, I think, all the time, uh, John, which uh, is a nice luxury to be able to afford uh, when you can just have separate people to kill penalties. Now, Yunowski can't keep it in. The penalty just expired. Lambie's out of the penalty box. There he is, number 23, with a puck. And so, both clubs are back to equal strength. And Boston College couldn't convert on that opportunity. Puck is back now to the Boston College end. One to nothing, BU, as they jumped out early with Fiddler scoring at 38 seconds on the power play from Lambie and O'Callaghan. 14.56 remaining now, first period of play. Providence Civic Center, the NCAA championship game between Boston University and Boston College. Here's Cotter breaking into the zone the left wing. Cotter swings on Skidmore, fires, and there's the save. Skidmore kicks it wide. House picks it up. Number 17 behind his own cage, swings it out to the right, gets by. Melanson can't reach it, gets by Ewanowski. He's got to turn and hustle back toward his own end line. Fourteen and a half minutes left in the period now as Boston College works to get it out their own end. And BU working this tough forechecking scheme that gave Wisconsin a whole lot of trouble on Thursday night. The Badgers just had a lot of trouble organizing an offense and right now BC is having some of the same kinds of problems but look at this quickly into the zone Ewanowski drives it into the crowd. We have a penalty coming up against Boston University John. There was a delayed call on that if you saw Paul Skidmore come rushing out uh, while BC still had control of the puck. I don't think they were aware that they uh, I don't think uh, Mike Ewanowski was aware that they had that penalty because he 
he could have gone deeper into the zone and try to set something up because they had the extra skate to come from the bench. That's something where a little bit of coordination is uh, maybe getting the word out to the ice before somebody does make an action, huh, Bill? Well, a lot of people don't realize how important just changing from the bench is. This can win or lose games for you, and uh, a lot of people just look at it and say these things happen, but it takes practice to, to do that proficiently. Jack O'Callaghan for high sticking at 551. Boston College has their second power play opportunity. Let's see what they do with it. They've got it in the attack zone to start. Comes back to the point man. Augustine fires. And that dropped out in front. Finally swept away. Close call. Drive from the right point. Knocked down by Hetnick. Hetnick on the fly back through center ice. He's driving into the left wing. Feeds it right. Shot. Mahar goes over the top of the net. A shorthanded bid by the Terriers. And now the Eagles try to work it out. They've got a man advantage for another minute 33 seconds. Pumped right back toward the Boston College zone. Let's see. I guess it dropped into the into penalty the stands, area. Uh, when is it a stand, John? This is this what makes BU so uh, such an outstanding team. Uh, when they're killing penalties, they just don't look to play defense and just shoot the puck down the ice. They're always looking for offensive opportunities, as we saw then, when Mark Hetnick uh, grabbed the puck in center ice and made a nice pass to Terry Meyer, and uh, only a fine save by Paul Skidmore prevented a goal. Paul Skidmore can make the big save that will turn people around. Let's uh, take another look at that uh, Skidmore save. Here's Hetnick breaking in. There's the pass. You see, there's the pass. I think he caught the puck a little on edge and caught it up a little higher than he wanted, although it took a fine save off the right arm of Paul Skidmore, as you saw in that shot. A bit of ice repair on the part of Joe Fawcett, and I guess we're all set to drop the puck. And again, it's inside the Boston University zone. Army will take the draw against Mark Hetnick, number four of BU. Comes back to Augustine, and he gets it right back. 126 remaining in the power play. The Eagles dump and run on this one. Luck in the zone, but it's coming to Mahar along the left wing board. He gets it out to center ice, picks it up, and he's on the run. Picked away from him at the blue line by Army, and Army will start it back now for the Eagles. 110 left in the power play. Here is Augustine. And he rips it in. Craig comes behind the net, lets it go, hammers there, doesn't control it. Back to the point. BC's controlling in the zone. Here's the drive. And Tommaso puts it wide. Along the wing board, Augustine tries to drive it deeper. LeBlanc flicks it behind the net. Here's Bill O'Neill of BU, number 27, throwing it out to center ice. And the Eagles will have to organize again with 44 seconds now left in the power play. Augustine goes to right defense. Charlie Andy Tommaso missed several games with an injury, came back and really helped the Eagles in terms of solidifying their defensive effort. Eagles on the power play. Augustine dropping it now for Army. He swings with 27 seconds left. Augustine drive deflected. Comes to the line. In behind the net is Bill LeBlanc, number 15. Doesn't have control. Hetnick doesn't either. Bill Army comes up with the number 16. Closes. Circles. He's on his backhand. Fires. We got a whistle. He fired. Craig made the stop, and the whistle was blown by Mito Martinelli. If we can show that, you'll see that the Boston College player went into the crease, John, and that is against the rules, and he faced off outside the blue line. Of course, this is a good play on the part of the BU defenseman when he just nicely pushed him into the crease. Well, here's a look at that again now. You see yeah, Billy Army. came out. In fact, he could have almost gone right in and shot, but you can see the the BC player will be standing right in the crease, and that's why the whistle was blown. 12 seconds left in the power play. There's the drop of the puck at center ice now. BC controlling. Comes back to Joe Casey. He loses the puck. Slipped off his blade. Comes back out to center ice. Now down to three seconds. Into the zone. Ewanowski pulls back. Steps up and fires. That's up into the crowd as time runs out on the penalty to O'Callaghan, and both clubs come back to equal strength again. This has been a bonus for Boston University where they've been able to kill off both penalties early in this first period. The draw this can make will make a break a team if they score in those power plays right off the bat. Well, we've got a one nothing score. Boston University scored in a power play at 38 seconds to take the edge. Now we're eight minutes into the period and uh, still one to nothing. Top of the faceoff circle for the draw. Hare drops it back. Control by Boston University. Bringing it out, Jack O'Callaghan feeds it into the zone. Bethel has it kicked away. Still trying to find it. Fiddler does. 
but he can't get it on target. We've got a whistle, and that's going to come back. I think we've got a, an offside detected no, anyway. Actually, I think that was just the, the Boston University player, Bethel, that was laying down on the ice, pushed the puck to his teammate, which it was in the offensive zone, so they have to bring it out outside the blue line. Lambie dumps it in. Behind the net stop by Skidmore. The Eagles in their own zone working it out. Hare. Hare dumps it to center. 11.43 left in the period. Lambie had to do a quick reverse on that one to find the puck as it came back to the opposite side. Back out to center right. Here's Fiddler. Number 12 is on the fly. Drive. Save. Skidmore. Fiddler goes into the corner. Kicks it behind the net. Comes out on the opposite side. Battle for the puck in the corner. Silk trying to pick it up. Fiddler. Stopped by Skidmore. He's got it covered. But again, Boston University puts the pressure on the Eagles. And Skidmore comes through. This has been their most effective line, John. Here you can see David Silk, who is really one of the finer players in uh, college hockey, controlling that puck. And he throws the puck over to Mark Fiddler, who makes a fine shot and only a great save by Skidmore. Skidmore prevented Mark from having a second goal. So that line has been outstanding all year long. They forecheck well, they take the man out of the play well, and that's why they've been effective. We're just about set for the draw. Actually, this line constructed when they took Tony Mahar and moved him uh, from Fiddler and Bethel up to Hetnick and Boilo and put Silk up, and they've got a whole bunch of scores. As a matter of fact, 182 points on that line before that goal by Fiddler. So. They've got about 184 now between the three of them. That's not too, too bad production for no. any line, John. <laughs> the two-century line or something. <laughs> Comes back out to center ice. 10.59 remaining in the period. Boston University. LeBlanc having some trouble controlling the puck. Barger takes it away from him. Barger is in control. Coming behind the cage. Takes a check. Loses the puck. Swings up on the left wing board. Bill Riley for House. House trying to guard it at the point, has trouble, got by Barger. He wanted to spin and fire right there in the slot, couldn't get it off. We've got another penalty coming up, John. Well, here it is. is uh, called a high sticking penalty. This is against Bill LeBlond. Now Boston College is certainly getting the opportunities with man advantage situations. This will be their third power play. A high sticking penalty at 9.23 on Bill LeBlanc. LeBlanc has really come along this year. Six foot sophomore from New Canaan, Connecticut. Uh, over last year has shown great improvement. I think uh, that's been one of the keys to uh, Boston University's success has been that Bill LeBlanc and Billy O'Neill have both played extremely well. I think they're as solid. You can see him hooking right there and giving a little Little hold at the end. So LeBlanc goes off, and here's BC again on the power play. Their third try. 10.28 remaining in the period now, and the puck is cleared by the Terriers. Back for it is George Amidon, number 15. 144 left in the power play. Bill Army picks it up and starts out on the right. Flicks it to Augustine. Augustine dumps it in. And now the Eagles will see if they can't move it up on Craig. A 1-0 hockey game, and of course a goal here will just even everything right up for B.C. Skidmore controlling. The Boston University has cleared twice, and now more trouble. B.C. can't break it out of their zone. 116 left in the power play. Back on the left and now to center ice. Picked up by Mark Hednick. Hednick from Brookline, as we said, really is Mr. Hustle for this BU club. And when he gets out there killing penalties, it's a double kind of work detail for him. Dumped in by Army, gets it deep, but O'Callahan's there, smashing it out, and it's right back out of the zone again. BU very successful, just dumping it out on the first try. Well, you know, they've played very effective uh, forechecking BC, and they haven't allowed BC to generate any good thrust coming up the ice. They've been just taking one man rushes and then when they've dumped it in BU has just been standing back there picking it up and throwing it all the way down again it's Augustine throwing it in Craig stops it behind the net O'Callahan back he eludes a check from Mullen O'Callahan trying to dump it out doesn't do it this time Augustine score! that was a deflection I think Mullen got a piece of the puck off Joe, of Augustine's drive Joe Mullen and this is why he's such a great hockey player you know there's some boys that have that little 
touch around the net, and Joe Mullen has. I think he's one of the most exciting hockey players in college. Watch him now come across the middle and tip that play right there, and it went right through, directed it just enough where it went through Jim Craig's leg. Joe Mullen, at 11 minutes of the first period, makes it a 1-1 tie hockey game. And, of course, the assist here goes to Joe Augustine. His shot from the point deflected by Mullen into the goal at 11 minutes. Well, you know, Joe Augustine deserves some credit on that, John, because he kept the puck in. Jack O'Callaghan had a chance to clear it, but Joe Augustine kept that puck in at the blue line and was able to take that shot. A lot of people feel that that might be a lucky goal, but believe me, I've seen Joe Mullen do that so many times that he is uh, quite uh, adept at tipping that puck in in front of that net. He's an exciting hockey player, a dynamic hockey player, a kid from New York City, never played high school hockey. Played on the, about the 16th floor of some building where they happen to have some ice and, <laughs> and built up his skating legs. Here's Skip House, number 17, behind his own net. The Eagles are back in this hockey game. It's one-to-one -one a tie, and the puck is out of the zone and heading back to the Boston University end. Icing is waved off. 8.40 remaining. Mullen now has 34 goals and 34 assists for a total of 68 points in the season. LeBlanc for Cotter. Finally picked up and hustled out of the zone by Johnson. Picked up by Cotter coming over the blue line. He sets it up through the slot, but Melanson couldn't move on it. O'Neill dumps it to keep it a little deeper, but the Eagles clear it back through center ice. Bill LeBlanc heads back. One to one, it's a tie. Now that's the way it should be in a national championship game. The preliminary this afternoon, surprisingly, Bowling Green defeated Wisconsin 4-3. One, one of the better consolation games that I've seen. It was an outstanding game. Into the zone. That's Andy Tommaso, number 19, working on it. Charlie dumps it along the wing board. There's a try. That just hit the back of a skate and bounced out. Drive kicked out by Craig as D.C. tries to put some pressure on. Tipped by Riley. Craig made the stop on Riley. The puck was loose, and it was a hairy moment. If a B.C. forward could have moved on that, Craig was down and out. So near and yet so far. Here's LeBlanc, number 15, working his way out of the zone. Bill LeBlanc to David Silk. Silk breaking in. Deeks the drive, coming over the line, closes, fires, Skidmore stops, sweeps it away, and it's Silk on the other side of the net looking for it. Sets it back up for Fiddler, broken up, right out in front by Casey. Casey jumped on Fiddler, taken away, kicked by Silk behind the line. Joe Augustine is there, number three, swings it around. Six minutes and 57 seconds remaining in the period. It's a 1-1 tie. Bucket center eye, so Callahan dumps it. You'll see BU do a lot of this uh, all night long. They love to throw the puck in and then go in and forecheck. And they forecheck well, primarily because the first man in, John, does his job. He really works hard to tie the opponent up, and uh, that's the key uh, to any successful forecheck. Well, we've got the Boston University scoring line on. Three scorers lined up, Bethel, uh, Fiddler, and Silk. Every one of them is a real marksman. I asked Jack Parker last night what, you know, happens if they throw the checking line out against him in that situation. <laughs> he didn't seem to be worried. Well, I don't think he has to because not only have they scored, but uh, they've got balance scoring on the rest of the team, too. Look out! Score! Loose puck! That was a sloppy defensive play that probably never should have happened, but Bobby Hare capitalized, and Hare makes it 2-1. to one. Well, I think if you watch here now, Jimmy Craig is standing to play the puck, and there's no communication between the two of them. They both went for the puck instead of him directing Lambie to the side, and as a result, the puck just squirted loose, and Brian here uh, was there to put the goal in the net. Bobby here, what did I say Brian for? You were thinking of Burns. He scored a few against me, so... <laughs> <laughs> so Bobby Hare capitalizes on a miscue by Boston University, and Hare, at 13-26, unassisted, makes it 2-1 Boston College. Stand by, clear the decks for action. We're going to have a hockey game tonight. They said I won't be surprised to see anything this evening. Closing, Mullen backhand, kicked out by Skidmore, cleared in front by Augustine. Well, it's a good thing Joe was there to clear that loose rubber. That could have been trouble. 
He moved over, and that's what you've got to have those defensemen out there doing. Absolutely. He's, uh, they have to clear those people out in front of the net, especially when there's rebounds hanging around. Goes in deep. Casey reached for it, couldn't quite get it. Comes along the wing board. The Eagles trying to get it out. The Terriers now trailing. Got their work cut out for him. Mullen pushes it deep. Air takes the check. Puck behind the line. Here's Mullen. Get more down. Puck moves back out to the circle, and the Eagles will start it out. No, they can't get it out. Mullen backhands it right back at him. There's Casey moving it along the wing board. Going down is Darryl McLeod, number 19. He's the one that went head first into the corner. Got a little bit of tussling going on in that very same corner now off the whistle but uh, Martinelli is there in a hurry and he just may be fingering somebody if they don't stop uh, wrestling well they're getting a little excited down there this is not the time to do it when you're in the finals of the NCAA I apparently he is, he is going to yeah. I think he's trying to set the tenor of the game uh, So there we have it, a penalty coming up against Boston College. Mike I'm John Carlson along with Bill Cleary, the coach at Harvard, here tonight for the NCAA championship game, BCBU, and the Eagles of Boston College have the edge right now, 2-1. to one. 5.34 remaining in the first period of play. This is the second power play, I believe, uh, John, uh, for Boston University. They scored on their first one early in the first period, and let's see how they do on this one. It took them uh, 38 seconds in the first period to score that one goal that they have. And it was Fiddler in the power play. Now O'Callaghan drive. He got a little bit too much ice. Here's Fiddler trying to tuck it in the corner. Can't do it. Boston University in the power play because of the penalty to Ewanowski. Here's the shot. Step score! Outstanding play by David Silk. Uh, he kept the puck in the zone. Didn't lose his composure. He lost his great poise. When he passed the puck over to uh, Jack O'Callaghan, it was all set to shoot, but he saw David go into the open spot again, and he got it, and it was a great shot. Uh, not much that Paul Skidmore could do on that one. David Silk, number 10 for Boston University, makes it 2-2, got a tie at 14-44 from O'Callaghan on the power play. Now, now you know why you don't want to get penalties against Boston University. Well... You at least saw the Boston University contingent congratulating one another for their efforts on that goal. 2-2, 5-0-7 remaining, first period of play. Puck is jammed up at the end board. Well, it was Ewanowski in for tripping, giving Boston University only their second power play opportunity of the night, and they converted it into a goal as they had the first time. Both of their goals, both of their goals have been power play goals. They've got 49 on the year, John. Uh, power play goals for out of 154 chances. It was only a matter of seconds. I'm not sure about that, but I think it was something like 18 seconds it took to score on that power play. Well, here's Boston College. With a 2-2 tie, House fires, Craig snaps it out of the air, and we've got a face-off to his right in the Terrier zone. This is one of the things you try to tell defensemen to do is keep the puck down a little. Well, keeping that puck up high makes it very easy for the goaltenders to make that save. You look for the rebounds by keeping it down lower. Mark Hetnick trying to break out of the zone. House took it away, but it's picked up by Boileau, and he throws it deep now for Boston University. So here are the Terriers in the attack zone again. Puck comes out. They'll have to clear now. With it is LeBlanc, that he dumps it back in again. Behind the cage, stopped by Skidmore. House has it. There's Hetnick giving him some trouble. Now well, Boston College having their trouble getting the puck out, and the red light went on. I think the guy behind the goal thought oh, they scored. The Look thing. out for the breakaway. Paul Hammer, a freshman in. He fires and hits the post. Mullen on the wing board throws it out of the zone. He didn't want to do that. He just got too much and pulled it with his hook. Well, there was Paul Hammer, the freshman. We've got a penalty coming. And we sure do. Against Boston University. Called by Martinelli. This is one of the things that makes uh, college hockey so great. Uh, everyone thought BU had scored the goal down the other end. In fact, the uh, goal judge had the light on. Uh, the, it was an open net and it went up and over. And then the puck came out to the blue line and Bill LeBlanc tried to shoot the puck. But it went deflecting off of 
uh, the Boston College player, and he went down on a breakaway, and then he hits the post. Well, I tell you, when you ring them like that, huh? <laughs> they call it the goaltender's friend, but uh, well, they say of it's a part it of his equipment. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I interviewed uh, Jim Craig last night, and he happened to be wearing a post at that time. <laughs> so I, think I don't think right. it's a bad idea, John. <laughs> as long as it's not a lamp post, we can get around. Four minutes and 13 seconds left in the period. The penalty, a two-minute minor on O'Neill for slashing. And the Eagles have another power play try. Craig stops that shot as it came off... The right side, Barrett uh, flipping on his off wing, but Craig was right there and uh, had plenty of room to take it. You see, most of the teams now are putting their wings on the offside on their power play because they're now getting the puck in position to oh, shoot the Hughes. puck better when they're on that Andrew offside. Martin and uh, I think it's, it's a good move on the part oh, of all Hughes. coaches. Didn't we see that a bit with the Russians? Well, I think that's where it all started was uh, the Russians. Uh, they've started a lot of uh, new things in hockey, and I think all for the better of hockey. See Joe Mullen out of defense. It shows what a versatile player he is, a boy that can play defense as well as go up to the forward line. Well, BU clears the puck. Boston College with a minute 30 seconds left and a man advantage. Working it out. Mullen loses the puck. Picked off by Johnson. He sends it into the zone. The penalty killers for BU are trying to put some pressure on here. Again, they've scored only two shorthanded goals this season. They've given up seven to their opponents. Uh, it's, uh, it has not been a productive season for shorthanded goals. John Melanson, though, has had one because when you have two in one season, that's not so bad for a hockey player. Well, both these uh, boys have played very well killing penalties. Uh, it's a great asset to a team to have two. Well, actually, they've got four penalty killers that come out and do an outstanding job for them. All set for the drop now. Two to two tie, 328 remaining in the period. With it is Ewanowski, the freshman from Brookline, Massachusetts for Boston College. An outstanding young player. Uh, he'll be some. You know, there are a lot of uh, young, talented freshmen on this BC club, as well as there are on the BU team. BU freshmen we've heard a lot about, but uh, take a look at some of these kids. Bobby Hare feeds it on the right. There's the shot, and it's deflected wide. Couldn't get a good piece of it. Ewanowski tries the centering pass, and it's knocked down by Mark Hetnick, and he brings it out for the Terriers. Here's Hetnick cruising toward the zone. Knocked off the play. With it is Augustine. Has a little trouble colliding with his own teammate. Mix up and signals there near the net as they tried to cruise too close. Ewanowski feeds it right for Amadon. Amadon backs it out of the zone. But again, it's the Terriers breaking in on the attack with 2.40 remaining in the period. Look out for the setup. Mickey Mullen scores. That's a great play. Great anticipation in the part of Dick Lambie. He not only anticipated well to keep the puck in the zone, but he drew everyone over and then slipped the puck back to uh, Tony Meyer, and he just put the puck on a lovely backhander, something you don't see very often these days. You see a fellow shoot a backhander into the net. These well, curved sticks have uh, not uh, been too conducive to shooting backhands, John. That was Tony Mahar, number 18, rather than 16, Mullen. That uh, a shorthanded goal for the Terriers, so O'Neill stays in the penalty box for another 24 seconds, but of course, BU has broken that two-all tie. It's 3-2, Boston University, at 17-24, Tony Mahar shorthanded from Lambie. That's the third shorthanded goal of the season for Boston University. Bill Army, number 16, controlling the puck in his own zone now for Boston College, feeds it back out on the left, and takes it right back from Casey. With it is Army. Army feeds it back out to center ice now as the Eagles try to get it working. They've got it in the zone. There's the shot. Craig makes the stop and covers in front of the crease. That was a good play right there. Uh, BC had a good opportunity with Billy Army coming in from the right side and defense and played it very well. Didn't run at him. He allowed the goaltender to just concentrate on Billy Army. You see... The defenseman just stayed right in the middle and allowed Jimmy Craig to just concentrate on Billy Army and make the save. What happens a lot of time is the defenseman runs at that player and allows him to make the pass to the open wing, and now the goaltender is out of position. Faceoff will come in the Boston University zone, and Jim Craig right now is having a conversation with Mito Martinelli, the official who'll drop the rubber on this particular draw. I think he might have wanted to go over to the bench, but... Uh, 
You know, it's in the rules that you just can't go over all the time unless there is an injury or equipment Or you change. unbutton your suspenders or something like that. <laughs> well, I think they've been all known to do that once in a while. Uh, <laughs> there are times when you're looking for a, a respite during the course of a game, and uh, I guess you lose every, every conceivable way to get that little break. They've been having a little bit of trouble with the ice. John... Uh, you see the referee down there just patching it up. Uh, there are some chunks that will come out, and what they do is try to scrape some snow, put it in there, and then get the water bottle so it'll all freeze over. Well, they've got that repaired, so we're just about set for the drop of the puck as Martinelli hits the whistle. There's Jack Parker, the head coach of Boston University. Got a great winning percentage since taking over, and oh. uh, he's been five years at the helm and he's, five successful he's years. He's done a great job, and uh, he's really going heavy on that gum tonight. <laughs> All set for the drop. Bill Army takes the face off for the Boston College Eagles. They trail by a goal. Mullen attacks the rubber. Now it's Army closing. He was pushed off the play. O'Neill made the play. He's out of the penalty box and came out to make a good one that time. Just make sure that nobody got too close to the goaltender. Casey, midsection stop by Craig. Mullen was there to pick up the loose rubber. He's ridden out, but I think we're going to have somebody take a hike to the On penalty a high box. Stick. Yes, they played it well, but uh, after the whistle, they went over and uh, hit Joe Mullen, who was standing in front of the net. Well, Boston College... Bill O'Neill. ...certainly has not been short of power play opportunities. O'Neill goes in. He just got out of the penalty box a few moments ago, and for high sticking, he's right back at 18.07. We saw a great play just before that off the faceoff when when uh, Bill Army won that face off and almost went in all alone. He opted to try to take that last geek around the defense instead of shooting, but this is one of the big things in hockey is the ability to win face offs, and I think Billy Army is one of the better ones. That's Len Zaglarski, the head coach at Boston College. We said before, he's done a pretty fine job this year keeping his club together uh, during some uh, adversity caused mainly by injuries and came on strong at the end of the year. Uh, did a remarkable job. I don't think uh, that a whole lot of Eagles fans expected that their team was going to be here in the NCAA Finals. No, I was talking to Lenny just before coming over, and uh, we were talking about their game with the Vermont, and he said, gee, that was just one of the lowest times that he's had in coaching and how they didn't play that well. And, of course, it's history thereafter. They went on to win all the playoff games, and here they are in the finals and I think much of the credit goes to Lenny he's done a great job keeping all his younger players you know sharp and uh, well, it's not easy because freshman coming in it's a big jump John a lot of people think because the boy has had great success in high school that he's just going to walk in but that doesn't always happen so there's Jim Craig he got his uh, respite he finally went over to the yeah. side got a little bit of uh, water and a little bit of this and that and and now he's got to get his equipment back on again, and he's having a little bit of problem with his uh, face mask. You see there's a little pad on the back. That covers the back of the head. And under the rules, that's got to be there. There it is. Now if a goaltender does take a uh, Dixie on his back, <laughs> why, he's all set as far as the back of his cranium is concerned. I'm Called sure the old he... back drop, and of course you can see his catching glove uh, sitting up on the net, part of the goaltender's equipment, the goaltender's stick, and... and uh, Craig uh, still seems to be having a problem with his equipment. Well, normally they allow the the player to go over to the bench, but that is not in the rules, and I think they're they're calling it the right way here, because otherwise you let goaltenders or players consistently go over to the bench. Well, there must be something really wrong with it now if he's allowing him to go over. This obviously is some equipment that has to be repaired. So Jim Craig goes back to the side. Three to two the score. Boston University out in front. We've got a minute 53 seconds remaining in the first period of play. And we've got a penalty on BU, a two-minute minor that sent O'Neill to the penalty box. So the Eagles are waiting here for a power play opportunity. And it's good fortune for them that the face-off, when it finally does occur, is going to take place in their attacking zone, precisely where they'd like to be. So far this season, Jim Craig is 1-0 and oh against Boston College. He was in the nets the night that BU beat BC 10-5. He made 41 saves that night. 
Brian DeRocher, the other Boston University goaltender and co-captain, was in the nets for the 6-3 victory and the Beanpot win at 12-5. DeRocher made 32 and 19 saves, respectively. But, uh, Craig had a uh, pretty good night in goal uh, during that third game. This is the fourth meeting of the year between these two clubs. Well, BU has had both goaltenders perform very well this year. Back to the point, it's Augustine. Drops it right point. Augustine working the left side. Number three broken up by Hetnick, and he throws it out of the zone. Charlie Andy Tommaso has to move it back up. The Eagles coming right back at him. Broken up by O'Callaghan. Huck is picked up by Mahar. Intercepted by Army along the wing board. Bill Army in the circle. Tries to fire. Lambie breaks it up. Andy Tommaso drops it. Lambie throws it back up to Mahar. And here comes Boston University shorthanded with a minute 25 remaining in the period of Hetnick and poked off his stick. Picked up by Mahar, circles into the zone, and he's dumped. The tripping call will come against Ani Tommaso, and that is going to even the sides for the rest of the first period. This is frustrating for a coach to have that happen when you've got the power play advantage, and what happens is everyone has got to pick up a man in that situation. When you allow the team that is shorthanded to skate around freewheeling, then always someone goes after someone, and penalties always ensue but I think you got to give some credit to uh, Tony Marr too he played that very well and uh, made a good shift around Charlie Anna Tommaso and perhaps he might have had a good opportunity to go in alone uh, if he hadn't pulled him down well it appeared that way it appeared as though he were going to get a break and I think uh, Charlie saw that and uh, there are some penalties that are good penalties in terms of the defense <laughs> And that might have been one of them. Why let him go in one-on-one -on -one in your goaltender? So we've got it even sides here for the remainder of the period. 109 remaining in the period. Austin College trying to control Burns. Loses the puck to Fiddler. Picked up by Mullen. Drops it on the right side. The Eagles are not in center ice. Fiddler breaks up Mullen coming through. But it's regained by Boston College. Burns with it. Poked off his stick by O'Callaghan. And now it's dumped in. Amadon gets it deep. Craig stops it behind his own cage. A 3-2 game. Boston University is out in front. BU opened the scoring at 38 seconds. This young man scored it. Mark Fiddler fires. Oh, just wide. Skidmore reached out. It sounded as though that might have creased the pipe out to Skidmore's right. Well, I think this is uh, this shows you what a what a goal scorer it's all about. Uh, you know, they're always in a position to shoot the puck. Mark didn't look, look as though he had a good angle, but he's always shooting that puck, always on the net, and he almost fooled Paul Skidmore on that shot. It wasn't a particularly hard shot, but as long as you're on the net, anything can happen. Getting it on the net's the name of the, the business, and uh, this kid is very good at it. Fiddler picks it off the draw. He sent it out, but his teammate Silk went down. Silk was looking for a call on that, didn't get it. And here it comes back now into the attack zone of Boston College, but they lose it. Silk feeds it to Fiddler. Fiddler breaks into the zone. Mark Fiddler cruising. Puck goes into the corner. He tries to set it up. That one's picked off. It's Boston College coming back at him. 16 seconds, 15 into the zone. It's O'Callaghan picking it away. Boston University controls in their end, and they start it back out. Lammy to center ice. Seven seconds to six seconds. Moves back up in center ice. Well, Army went down, trying to control the puck now, moves into the zone, but the buzzer's down. There you have it. That is the end of the period. 3-2, BU and Bill. This is still anybody's hockey game. Oh, it is, very much so. And, uh, you know, Boston College has been explosive, and I don't think you can give them a, a chance uh, because they have been known to have been able to put that puck in the net, especially when you get boys like Joe Mullen and... Billy Army and Paul Barrett, uh, they're explosive. They can they can score goals, and uh, they've proved it all year long. So I, I'm sure Jackie Parker is very concerned. Well, I think it's uh, something for him to think about, and the fact that, uh, you know, they did jump out to that early goal, but it did not uh, lose or take away the resistance of the Eagles. They came right back at them and uh, showed that they're not going to be out of this hockey game, and nobody's going to take them lightly. No, I don't, I don't think you ever see a BC team... Uh, take anything or never you never take them lightly and uh, but uh, I'm sure Jackie's happy that he's sitting there with a 3-2 victory 3-2 uh, uh, advantage right now I can't That's say victory we still got <laughs> he won the first period <laughs> he'd like to have me say that wouldn't he <laughs> well there you have it the first period of play and at the end of one it's Boston University three Boston College two we're going to be right back with a whole lot more of NCAA championship hockey from the Providence Civic Center
Well, hi again, everybody. Here at the Providence Civic Center, it's 3-2. to two. Boston University is holding the edge over the Eagles of Boston College. We've got a tight hockey game going so far, and uh, we've got a lot to talk about in terms of that hockey game. And with me is former Princeton goaltender Ed Swift, who sometimes makes light of the goaltending duties uh, that he uh, had at Princeton. Matter of fact, in an article in Sports Illustrated once, uh, sort of anonymously, uh, Ed uh, took care of that chore. But, Ed, tonight we've got two goaltenders that uh, are facing each other, and Craig and Skidmore, and I'd like you to give us, you know, maybe a, a short analysis, your feeling uh, on these two goaltenders, their uh, contrasting styles. Well, uh, Skidmore is the more polished goalie. There's no question about that. That's, that's no slight on Craig. Uh, Skidmore is probably the best college hockey goalie I've seen in the well, since I've been watching college hockey, he's uh, uh, very well controlled around the net. Uh, I was talking to him last night. He was, he was saying the biggest thing that he's worked on in the last uh, two years uh, since he came up as a, as a freshman, he was the ECAC Rookie of the Year, uh, was his concentration. He's got terrific concentration around the net. He, uh, he controls the play uh, as well as, as any goalie in college right now. And by that, I mean he's, he's swallowing up his rebounds. He's keeping passes from going out in front of the net, uh, holding his angles, making all the, all the stops that he has to. Craig, uh, Craig let in a goal tonight that uh, we all... Uh, just live in fear of and I understand I, I wasn't at the NCAAs last year but uh, had a similar occurrence last year uh, outside of those uh, momentary flaws uh, he's he plays a, a good stand-up game a uh, also is good with his rebounds he, he kicks the puck out more than Skidmore does uh, hasn't hurt him tonight but he's uh, uh, I don't think quite as quick but he, he's a very good positional player well, of course, that play uh, to which you make reference has to be the play where uh, Jim Craig moved straight out in the slot. Lambie came by, went right. The puck went uh, off to one side, and bingo, there was a Boston College goal. It was a uh, mix-up in communications, obviously, between defenseman and goaltender. Apparently, they didn't talk to each other at that one moment in time that was so costly. That's right, but... Uh... It's the goalie's responsibility to get it out of the front of the net. He can't expect it. it, it no question, it was a mix up of communications, but uh, it, when in doubt, put it in the corner. When in doubt, get it out, is yeah. the old saying. That's I right. Think, That's he? right. Yeah. <laughs> but he bounced back. It, 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 he's, you know, he's got two periods left, and uh, they've got the lead now, and so that's behind. All right, the lead belongs to uh, Boston University, but how would you appraise the game in terms of play uh, between the two clubs? Where, where do, you, do you think we had a balanced first period? Do you think uh, somebody, well, I guess it's hard to say that, that uh, BU didn't have an advantage yeah, in the period. Yeah, uh, BU definitely did. They played ha at least, I, I haven't gone through, but they had a lot of penalties, and, and they still controlled the pay play, even though they were a man down. Uh, it was, uh, they scored all three goals, uh, when either they were man up or they were a man down. So it seems to me that BC ought to work on keeping five men on the ice uh, for both teams. BU's playing uh, uh, excellent hockey. BC is lucky to be in this game right now at three to two. Uh, that, I, I'm, not say, I'm not giving this game to BU by any means. BC is, uh, is a, a smart hockey team. They're a, a very good hockey team uh, in, in four checking and in uh, the wings do a good job coming back, covering covering the men up. As I say, if they can keep five men on the ice, I think it's going to be to their advantage. Well, of course, there's another thing that Boston College can do, and that is explode. They've got a couple of players, and particularly everybody talks about Joe Mullen. I think you got to talk about him. Uh, he's dynamite, and when the fuse is lit, Joe can come in and get you right back in a hockey well, game. Well, he's in, in both these games uh, uh, of the NCAA tournament. Joe has scored the first goal. He's their, he's their fire plug. The first goal for Boston College, and he uh, uh, gets him going. As you say, he's capable of, of doing it at any time out there. But he plays the same game, you know, 60 minutes. Uh, so whether whether he he's, he's scoring goals or not, he is a, he is an influence, a, a dominating influence when he's on the ice, and he's one of the few BC players that really are like that because they're they're very much a team-oriented, you know, type uh, uh, squad. They you know they don't have the big stars that BU does, except for Mullen. We mentioned that. Ed Swift is a former Princeton goaltender. That's true. He's also a writer for Sports Illustrated and an editor of a magazine and a very fine one, too, called Hockey. Uh, Ed has a copy with him, as a matter of fact, gracing his lap. And one of the things that we talked about previously, Ed, was uh, an article that uh, is going to appear in Hockey about a couple of uh, players who are in this game. 
the, who have brothers in the pros. Right. Uh, Mark Fiddler and Paul Miller, they're, I'll just show you the, co the copy we have here. It's, uh, uh, got we got the, it oh, there? There we go. Uh, Hi, folks. There it is. Sorry, Ed, we'll uh, have to blank you out. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, hockey. It's a very well done magazine. And in it, uh, and of course, uh, we talk about Mark Fiddler of uh, Boston University, his brother. Uh, is playing for the Cleveland Barons, while on the other hand, Paul Miller's brother is playing for the Boston Bruins. Right, and uh, uh, both these uh, players with BU are freshmen now. They're not quite ready to jump up and uh, and join the brothers in the pro ranks, but I think they're both thinking about it. And uh, uh, Mark Fiddler is somebody that, that could very well go after next year if he decides to you know, to, to go the pro route, uh, instead of finishing his education, he's probably good enough. Well, of course, there's an influence there that might be greater on those two young men than it is on uh, uh, some of the others, but uh, there seem to be several players on the ice here tonight who are being viewed uh, covetously by the pros. I think John Bethel and Joe Mullen uh, might be considered in that category. The New York Rangers uh, are looking at them with big eyes. And uh, also, of course, David Silk of Boston University, who has that marvelous touch when it comes to uh, putting the puck somewhere around the goal mouth. Yeah, that's right. He's uh, he's a great player, and the, the you know they're they're excited about him. They're excited about Dick Lambie, uh, who's uh, I think St. Louis has got him. Uh, he's he's a senior. He could go you know step right in, be playing in NHL defense uh, next year at this time. Skidmore again is uh, they're watching as as closely as anybody. Let me ask you this, uh, in terms of uh, these uh, players who have brothers playing in professional hockey, as you went through the interview, did you find that there was a great impact on the playing careers of these two young men, uh, Fiddler and Miller, and a great impact on maybe their outlook, uh, the psychology of, uh, of their... Uh... Uh, Mark Fiddler and Mike Fiddler are, live, you know, they're in, Mike's on the road all the time with the Barons and they sort of touch base once in a while, so it doesn't seem as if it's more of a, uh, uh, an influence than it would be for just any ordinary uh, top-notch college hockey player, the fact that their brothers are in there. I was surprised at that. Uh, it, it seems surprising, but then in terms of, I, I guess, of thinking, uh, well, Mike is always on the road. Of course, there's another Fiddler brother that uh, has... Uh, been uh, moving around and in, in hockey circles uh, he's got a brother Joe that right. also plays uh, so it's really uh, a three-man family or, family or whatever affair, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the Millers uh, of course said uh, it was a big step for uh, uh, Bob Miller to go on to the Boston Bruins from the University of New Hampshire and that quantum leap that he took That's right. in he, just one year he went without a contract which is different than Mike Fiddler who, who did have a contract with the Barons uh, Bob Miller had to had to go to uh, the Boston Bruins, a playoff team that uh, had three established centers, and he made the team and, uh, and and did it, giving up his college eligibility. So it was a it was a risky step, but he had he had enough confidence in his ability, and uh, he already played for the Olympic team, so he figured that that was the best thing for his hockey career, and it's proved out to be. Well, you were a college hockey player. Did you ever uh, harbor dreams of? of being a professional well, goaltender? As a matter of fact, I, I had a tryout with the St. Louis Blues the last eight days. And <laughs> was, uh, I was the first one they let go, but <laughs> I, I was there one time, yeah, very briefly. Well, I want to say, Ed Swift, a pleasure talking to you always from Hockey Magazine, from Sports Illustrated. Uh, yeah, you always bring a nice approach to uh, what you have to say about hockey, and we appreciate it. Thanks, John. That's Ed Swift of Hockey Magazine. We uh, hope you enjoyed it. Well, hi again. Here we are with Boston University against Boston College for the championship of the United States, the ice hockey championship. And uh, we've got BU in the lead, 3-2, to two, after one period of play. Quick score by Boston University. BC battled back into the game. We had a two-all tie at one point. Matter of fact, we had BC out in front at one point, but it was Boston University moving into that 3-2 score before the end of the first period of play, and that's the way it stands here at the Providence Civic Center. With me now is Mr. Burt Smith, 
Webster Smith, a member of the NCAA Ice Hockey Committee, and I guess you can say without too much reservation that this year's tournament has been a success. It's the finest tournament we've had, Jack. Uh, I've been involved with this program, this committee now for the, this is my fourth year, and without any hesitation, it's the finest tournament we've had. Have you noticed that uh, the Eastern teams seem to do better playing in the East? And no. the Western teams seem to do a little bit better playing in the West over the oh, past few years? No, I wouldn't say that. I, I think uh, the schools in the East and the schools in the West play the same kind of hockey, interesting hockey, very good hockey, and uh, it's just a question of having a hot night with a hot goaltender, and uh, you come up with a winner. Well, maybe playing near home uh, is an advantage. I would, uh, I would think that you couldn't discount that. <laughs> no, you can't discount home ice, but uh, on the same, by the same token, most of the teams out west play in arenas like this and uh, with the crowds that uh, follow our teams. I don't think that uh, the ice makes that much difference. Let me ask you this question in terms of uh, the tournament and uh, it, it being in the east and west. How do you come to the decision as to where it's going to be? Well, there are a lot of criteria that uh, we follow. The committee will meet tomorrow to look over the bids for next year and possibly the following year and uh, the size of the uh, uh, arena, the surface, and the sponsoring agencies all enter into it. So, But you've had a real great, and I'd I like to throw a little bouquet at the Brown people. They've done a tremendous job, one of the best I've ever seen. Well, I think uh, that's uh, well-deserved. They certainly have organized things very well here and gotten the word out. The message has been given to a whole lot of people that this tournament was going to be in Providence this year. The uh, uh, prospects for next year, have you already made a selection as to where the tournament's no, going to be? No, we haven't made a selection. We'll probably do that either tomorrow morning or uh, tomorrow afternoon. Our committee's still meeting. They've met all week and they'll meet, finish sometime late tomorrow afternoon. That'll be one of the things that we'll make a decision on, or hope to. And what are the things that you use in terms of making that decision? What are the qualifications or criteria? Well, we would like to see the uh, tournament move from the east to west on alternate years. And uh, again, it's the size of the arena, the ice surface, the, uh, the capability of holding it, and uh, certainly, as I indicated, the sponsoring agencies. So uh, there are a lot of factors, but uh, uh, it, I think it's just like anything else. You go in with basketball into a certain area, you look for things that uh, will promote basketball. We're looking for things that will promote hockey, and certainly this is a hotbed of hockey without any question. Well, there's no question about that. And we love having the tournament close by. I can assure you of that as well. Uh, in, in terms of the uh, melding of refereeing uh, cores, uh, you have East and West working together in this tournament. They seem to be working well together. I think uh, this has been a tournament very well officiated so far. Well, I agree, and I'm a little prejudiced because uh, Steve Hardy from the ECAC and I have been working now for two years to try to coordinate officiating, so it's the same here as it is in the West. And uh, I think what you said about the two officials being able to integrate and work together is uh, something that we've looked for for a long time. The uh, problem with officiating uh, over the past couple of years uh, in, in terms of, of getting together, in terms of uh, melding of officials' scores, has been exactly what? And, I, you know, and this is a problem not necessarily perceived by me, but uh, simply, I guess, received by me. Well, what we've done is that uh, we had a clinic in the West when we brought Steve and some of his people out to observe our two-day clinic. I came out uh, East when uh, the East had their clinic, and we had mutual problems. We discussed mutual problems, and... Uh, uh, we attempted to coordinate and do the job that we think is necessary to have good officiating. Well, I guess we can say congratulations to you, Mr. Smith, for the conduct of affairs in this tournament, and we certainly hope that any future NCAA ice hockey tournaments are as successful as this one. Well, Jack, my thanks to you and thanks to the people in this area for supporting this tournament because it's a great one and we appreciate all the help. Thank Ms. you. Mr. Bert Smith of the NCAA Ice Hockey Committee here tonight, of course, for the championship round of this year's tournament, Boston College versus Boston University. And at the end of one period of play, three to two, Boston University holding the edge. But we've got 40 minutes of hockey left, and we sure hope you stay right where you are. As we see, we've got teams back on the ice, and we're just about ready to get going with this thing one more time. Boston University and Boston College with a 
situation where four skaters each will be on the ice. O'Neill is still serving eight seconds on that penalty that was assessed to him near the uh, end of the period. And Amadon is in there for Boston College. Times now running on those penalties as the period begins. Just underway, second period of play. BU out in front. Fiddler going into the corner. Jammed up. We should... Uh, They've got the advantage right now. So one man relieved out of the penalty box, and Boston University has a man advantage. Five on four. Here's Silk. Just overran the puck, reached out with a stick, couldn't quite do it, and Army's coming back. We're down to three seconds now, and the penalty, which uh, was recorded on the board, is against Amadon, but it was not. It was against uh, Andy Tommaso. They put number 15 up on the board. Uh, that's Amadon. Andy Tommaso was down there on that tripping call. There's a quick shot that's well wide. Jim Craig just watched that one cruise by. Buck comes back into the BC zone, icing, and they'll bring it to the BU end for the faceoff. Well, that's a good move, BU, just to relieve a little bit of pressure. That line has been out there trying to score on the power play, and I think they wanted a little line change at that point. 18 minutes and 58 seconds remaining now. This is the second period of play. Boston University holding the edge. How long? Well, we'll see. Bobby Hare will take the face off for Boston College. Off to the left of Jim Craig. All set for the drop of the puck, and there it is coming toward Ewanowski. Sends it through the slot. Barrett can't reach it. Dumped behind the line. O'Neill's got it. O'Neill flips it up along the left wing board. BU breaking out. It's Boston University on the run. Boileau looking for the feedback on a give and go as he breaks into the zone, but the Eagles break that bit up. He just tried to drop it back, but dropped it up over, over the blue line, and the right wing was offside. Meet your grandfather. All set now. We'll have the drop of the puck in the special spot just outside the Boston College zone. Hetnick whips it back to left defense. That's O'Neill feeding it right, and the Terriers put it right back in the attacking zone. Over 11,000 fans here tonight to watch this NCAA championship final. Comes out through the slot. No Terrier there to use it. All the way back at the BUN. Craig stops it. No icing. That's called off. Here's Boileau. Didn't control it long. Comes out to center ice. Hetnick puts on the feed. Breaking through Mahar. Mahar couldn't reach it. Now it's here behind his own net. Picked up by Boileau. He'll send it out. Left point O'Neill. O'Neill sends it toward the slot. Broken up by Hare, who cruised out and deflected it. Barrett throws it out of the zone. Hare can't control, but it's still the Eagles. 3-2, BU on the scoreboard. Terriers coming back. 17.50 remaining in the period. Drive, and that's LeBlanc's bid. Stopped by Skidmore. LeBlanc shoots the puck very well, John. He's improved vastly since the start of this season. Breaking into the zone is Ewanowski, right wing circle, trying to set it up, goes by Barrett. Wallow picks it right back out. Now here's Miller. Miller tries to fire it in, can't get a pass defenseman, Eddie Tommaso. Eddie Tommaso just dropped his stick, banging into Miller. Miller hits the board. Charlie picks up the stick. Buck comes back through the slot, nobody can use it. Here's Miller setting it up. Skidmore, look at that one. That's a close call. That one hits the goaltender in the wrong part. Why, he can go in behind him. There again, being on the net is most important. Back out to center ice, the Terriers. Trying to move it. They've got a one-goal lead. Here's Lambie, number 23 in the zone. Feeds it right. A little too far ahead for the quick shot, but out in front, Lambie making a try on the deflection. Can't get it by Skidmore. Breaking up on the right side, Daryl McLeod. McLeod is down. Puck is loose. Callahan, Callahan has it behind his own net. Feeds it up on the right wing. 16-42 remaining in the period. Boston University holding the edge. Fourth time these two teams have met this season, but this time it's for a national title, and that's something different. Here's Craig. Carrier starting the break out off the left wing board. Daryl McLeod brings it up into center ice, number 19, into the zone. And the Eagles are just picking them up at that line and uh, preventing them from skating in and forming a pattern. 
as they bring the puck into the zone. It looks, uh, Bill, as though they're taking the old Toronto Maple Leafs uh, theme song. Let's just knock them off at the blue line and don't let them get in there and do any damage. Well, what they're trying to do is take away the strong suit of Boston University, John. Their game is to throw the puck in and forecheck. And BU, BC, this period has done an, an excellent job of trying to box those wings out, keep them from getting in there quickly, and they're checking them while in the center ice zone. And that's the key to it. I'll tell you that the secret to BU, too, is the way they come back... Uh, uh, on the last shift that they were there, boy, their wings come back, and it's a big help to the defense, and that really generates a lot of good offensive plays. And we're set for some more offense now, off the faceoff, back out towards center ice with 16 minutes left in the period. Boston University holding the edge, and they've got the puck in the attack zone again. Back up along the left, Kennedy. Kennedy sets it out to center ice, still chasing the puck. Slips in and Amadon's got to move it out to center. Well, they're playing the game right around the middle of the rink right now. Melanson, now Kennedy. Kennedy from Brockton. Advances it. Lambie starts down. He's from Auburn, Massachusetts. Played some college hockey at Salem State on the corner of the net. Lambie charged. He just went over the top of the puck. Now back on the ring for with the offense here. Coming against Boston College. There's a tripping call God coming damn it up. On. And Amadon goes out for two minutes on the trip. I think he got a little frustrated because he got knocked down here. There's Amadon. There's Amadon going for it. He collides right here now. He knocked down and his Billy Carter starts to move. You can see him take his feet right out from underneath him. What's well, an easy call for a referee? <laughs> nice and clear cut. You'd like them all like that, John. Referees have done a good job. Joe Fawcett from Springfield and Mito Martinello is from... Uh, the Detroit area, he uh, does all the work in the WCHA. He's been a, a veteran of these NCAA tournaments, and I think this is the 10th one he's worked in. At 4.28. 4.28, the time of the penalty tripping against Amadon. Boston University in the power play have been devastating on that so far in this hockey game. Two power play goals. And here they are working another man advantage situation. O'Callahan cruising along the wing board. Drops a little bit deep, comes back up to the point. This is Lambie, 23, brings it down to the left and gets it right back. Wing for Fiddler. That was kind of a lazy pass for O'Callahan, and Boston College took advantage of that. Just jumped right on it and got it out of the zone. That's something you don't see them do very often. They pass the puck very well. That's been one of the secrets to their power play is the fact that they do pass the puck extremely well. That step man in the right wing circle just might have been a trigger man, and when he thought about passing, he, he was also thinking about shooting, and he did half a beat. Well, normally they throw the puck over to O'Callaghan first and then into Mark Fiddler, but they went to Mark first, and I think he just got a little bit Luster. Here's sloppy. Fiddler. No, oh, he rips one wide. Comes back out to the right point. Now it's Lambie. Now Fiddler. Fiddler deeks, he's still got the puck, still got it! Skidmore stops her, and it flips up over the top. And I'll tell you, when Fiddler's got you dead to rights like that, you usually have to look behind you and pick it out of the thread. Well, I think you see why he's a great scorer then, right there. He, he made two or three great plays. But you have to take a fellow out of the play. Uh, B, BC, both on two or three different occasions, they try to go for the puck rather than playing the man. And you just can't do it on, uh, with a player like Fiddler. Look out now. There's a close-in shot on Skidmore, and he picks it off as Bethel slams one into the stick. John Bethel, number nine, a very fine up-and-down hockey player. He just gives you good night's work all the time, solid. Here's Fiddler coming in. You see, now they come out to play him, and then Bethel, is who normally stands in front of the neck, just slides out to the side and has a good opportunity, but Skidmore just held the post. Well, it's Boston University in the power play for another 30 seconds now. Man advantage, Lambie. Walks up, goes to O'Callaghan, now feeds to the circle. Back to O'Callaghan, Lambie's got her. Look, slides it into the circle, that's Bethel. O'Callaghan ripped, kicked out, Bethel over skating the puck of the rebound. He was right there with Skidmore committed down, but he went over the top of it. I've seen it happen so many times. That's the fellow that normally scores goals. And now, Boston University trying to get something going. Sweet Dye is taken down. Mark Sweet Dye, number 10, taken down into the boards. And play stops right there. The penalties all over on Boston College. Both teams back to full strength. And the crowd was looking for a penalty on that one. That was a great bit of passing on the part of the BU power play. And I think that's 
what makes them uh, such a, an outstanding team. They throw that puck around very well, and when you try to alter your defense to combat the way they play it, then they can go into other formations, and they're very difficult to defense. We're going to look now at the drop of the puck out to the right of Jim Craig in the Boston University zone. Let's Hare will take the face off for Boston College. Goes to the board and then quickly behind the line. Out in front. Whoop! There was a try, but Hare couldn't stay on his skate. That slides in on Craig just underneath a pair of skates. Jimmy got down low and found it and covered it up. But there again is, is what a good goaltender will do. You see, he just didn't stand up straight or else he would never have seen that puck. He's down low, crouching. Look at him. Just concentrate right on that puck. See his head down, watching the puck. He's out to the point. See him down, concentrating. And that's how he found it. So Jim Craig makes the stop. But of course, that's where you can get into trouble when there's a crowd out in front of you. Out along the wing board, scramble for the puck, two down, how many to go, three to two the score, Boston University out in front, 13 minutes remaining in the period, here's Boileau, he carries it in behind the net, score, Mahar, excellent play by Boileau, who didn't get too anxious, and fed Mahar in front for the easy score. Well, he came in off the side, he was... See, he nearly didn't have a good angle, so instead of shooting, he went around the neck, held the post, forced Skidmore to go down. As he came around, he just looked out in front, threw the puck out, and Tony Meyer was a, was a trailer who was always the most dangerous player. But I'll tell you, I wish we could go back to right at the start, the play that uh, Boileau made at the blue line, kicking that puck off his skates onto his stick, I think was really the key to the goal. Most fellas would never pick up that pass uh, coming in uh, at the blue line, John, and that's... Uh, that was the play as far as I'm concerned. Well, a sweet bit of hockey by Boston University makes it 4-2 BU. Boston University goal. Now we're going to see that one again. Here's Mark Hetney. There's what you want Let's to see. Let's see if here. we can watch him, see him throw the puck over. Let's see if we can pick it up. Well, unfortunately, we can't see the play that Boileau made just before that. But here he is. He held it. He took his time. He had Skidmore down and dead to rights, and there it is. Nice move. And unfortunately, both Boston College players followed the puck and, and started to come on the near side to chase them and left no one in front of the net. That's what they call playing the man and not the puck. Absolutely. I think that's the rule. And it wasn't followed at that time, and much to the chagrin of Paul Skidmore and, of course, the Boston College fans. It's 4-2, BU. Mahar from Boileau and Hetnick at 7.05, second period. You know, just an aside, if we might, uh, I think a word should be mentioned about this uh, contingent from Madison. Uh, I think all the people here are just uh, amazed at what a, what a great group of people the, uh, the University of Wisconsin has brought with them. I don't know, there may be 3,000 people here, and they just uh, having the greatest time, and, and I've seen this happen on two or three other occasions in Detroit last year. They're the same way. After the game the other night when Boston University beat them uh, in the semifinal game, the uh, entire contingent stayed there, I think, for about an hour, an hour and a half, uh, serenading everyone with their band, and they just have a great time. And, uh, you know, while they want to win, uh, they don't get upset. Uh, they're, they're here to enjoy it. And uh, I, I'm just, everyone is so impressed with this group. That uh, was the thing, I think, that was, was uh, most notable about them, Bill, the fact that, here they were losers in two consecutive games. They stayed, they serenaded, they cheered right down to the end. And when their team came out to get the fourth place of four teams awards, they cheered every movement. Absolutely. Which, uh, that's, those are real fans. They even cheered the Bowling Green team when they skated around the rink with the third place uh, trophy. Those are real fans. You've got to admire that. Well, we're back at it with 12 minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the second period to play. 4-2 BU. BU on the attack again. Into the zone. The shot wide by Mahar. He scored the last two BU goals. Number 18, Tony Mahar. Had uh, quite a, a brother uh, for a hockey player here uh, last year. And Did a uh, few of them. And, of course, uh, before that, there was another brother. That's right. Terry and Rick. One well, it's unusual that three of them are that great. Excellent hockey player. Comes in on Craig. He just moves out and covers the puck. The whistle was blown. The puck slid into the net. Don't worry about it, folks. Uh, that was whistled down well before <laughs> Craig was bumped. 
These boards are a little tricky, uh, John. I've noticed in the last two evenings that uh, that uh, a lot of times pucks are shot in, and for some reason there must be pieces jutting out, and uh, they'll go back the opposite way. In fact, Paul Skidmore, on that last play down around the BC net, was expecting the puck to go around, and he came actually came right back and landed right by the post, and uh, you know he was going the way it normally should have gone. So there's the draw. Army trying to squeeze a shot off in the face-off circle, sends it out of the ring, and we'll have another face-off. Billy Army is one of the best at uh, getting face-offs. We saw just then why he is. He got that puck from Paul Miller and actually got a shot on net. Let's see what he does this time. Okay, it's Army taking the face-off against Miller, the youngster from Bill Ricca. There's the draw, controlled by the Eagles. Well, he wanted to get it back to the point, couldn't do it. Buck is pushed right back to the BCN. McLeod comes in. He gets the shot off on Skidmore, despite the fact he was cut down. Delayed penalty call coming up. Boston University still now trying to squeeze one off. It's going to be against BC, as, of course, you could tell with BU in possession of the puck. And now the Eagles will give up again a power play to Boston University. Well, you know, that's what speed will do, John. Uh, speed will cause penalties, and BU has been skating very well, and they had that opportunity. The only way he was going to get him, McLeod definitely had the advantage, and the only way that he could do is to trip him and bring him down. So, Charlie, Andy Tommaso did trip him. He did bring him down, and at 8.06, he goes to the penalty box for two minutes for that violation. 11.52, remaining second period of play, 4-2, Boston University out in front. Two goals by Mahar so far in this game, so he's working his way to some sort of star <laughs> selection if he keeps it up. Let's see how the faceoff goes here. Well, so BC would like to get the draw to see if they could shoot that puck down right off the bat. Now Bethel couldn't control it, but neither could Joe Mullen. Bethel now tips it deep. With it is Silt. Silt circles behind the net. They're in the attack zone of the power play. Lambie, drive, that's knocked down right in front, he put it right on Joe Mullen. Mullen chasing the puck, watch out for this kid, he can't control it, he's down, got a penalty coming up as Joe Mullen, with an excellent effort, actually forced that penalty call and he evens out the penalty situation here. Well, that's a, that's a fine effort on the part of Joe Mullen and I guess you see right there why he is one of the most exciting players in college hockey. You see, he never quit on it, he kept going after Dick Lambie, in fact, uh, if Lambie hadn't pulled him down right here, Mullen would have had an opportunity. And I'll tell you, there are very few times that he misses when he's in that clear. Indeed. So the penalty is looking at 8.29. Dick Lambie goes off. And so the power play opportunity for Boston University goes right along with it. But again, Joe Mullen just forced the issue on that play. And by doing so, he evened the sides and, of course, he gave Boston College the opportunity to go on the power play for 22 seconds at the end of uh, this penalty situation on their side of the board. We have Andy Tommaso in the penalty box for BC. Lambie is in there for BU. There's the shot wide off the left point by the Eagles. Picked up by Amadon. He sends it deep. Silk goes for it in the corner. Number 10 going along the boards. He's squeezed off the play. Fiddler picks it up at center ice. And he's checked there losing the puck. Army. Makes a nifty move at center ice. He breaks into the attack zone. Tries to squeeze it off, but O'Callaghan was riding him all the way. And now it's Boston University bringing it out. 4-2 to two the score. BU's got the lead. And now they've got the attack going. Here's Silk. Silk comes in. Mullen takes it away. Shot saved by Skidmore. That's a quick one on the sliding puck back to O'Callaghan. That was a tremendous move by David Silk. I think everyone expected him to go outside the defense, and he cut right back in and made a tremendous move. Here we go again with the Eagles in the zone. Abaddon shot well wide. We had nobody there to take advantage. There's Mullen out in front trying the deflection, but Craig was right there with him and had a stick behind his stick and no chance. O'Callaghan dumps it in. The Terriers are now going to change up. I'm John Carlson. With me is Bill Cleary, the Harvard University hockey coach, bringing you tonight's NCAA championship game as the Terriers started out on their own end. Ten minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the period. It's the second. And Boston University holds the edge, 4-2. O'Neill sends it deep. Well, we're down to 12 seconds and running on Andy Tommaso's penalty for BC. 30 seconds on Lambie's penalty for Boston University. Look out! There's a bid, and it goes wide. The puck loose out in front. 
but it goes wide. BU loses the chance. That was Mahar, and he hasn't missed too many tonight. He has two goals, and then the puck is dumped all the way back into the BU zone. And well, well what, what happened was uh, Charlie and Tomasso come out of the penalty box, and uh, and you can't do that. Uh, you have to go back into your own zone before you can play a puck. You cannot play a puck coming from your end if you're in center ice or in the offensive zone. So they bring it all the way back to the Boston College end by virtue of that. Andy Tommaso was jumping out of the penalty box. His penalty had just expired. And Lambie is still in there for BU. Yes. He's got 19 seconds left on his. So you heard what the call was. And that's why the puck is all the way back in the Eagles zone. You know, BC just cannot uh, afford to get sloppy in their own end. Uh, because BU will take advantage of those uh, mistakes. Bobby Hare sends it in front. Paul Barrett is squashed off the play as he cruises down toward the slot. Still the Eagles in front of this thing. Now Lambie's out of the penalty box and the man advantage is gone to Boston College. Bobby Hare with the puck. Hare circles in the corner. It's Hare sending it behind the net, but it's picked away and sent back to the corner. Not quite as effectively, perhaps, as was wanted by LeBlanc, but nonetheless, he got it back there to tie it up to the faceoff to the right of Jim Gray. So with 9-11 left in the second period of play, 4-2 BU, we've got a face off in the BU zone. BU's checking very well, John. Uh, when they're coming in, when BC is coming into that offensive zone, there are very few uh, eagles that are left open. And uh, I think it's uh, the wings are doing an outstanding job checking their, their wings, allowing their defense to play the puck area. Here's the draw. We saw a little bit of the Boston College band working up behind the net. Craig kicks one out. And now it's the Terriers' turn to see if they can't get something sparked. They've got the lead. It's Boston College that's got to turn it on. Casey throws it out the center. Walter Kyle just tips it off to Brian Burns. He's in the zone. Picked off by the Terriers. Back to the wing board. Eagles trying to fly here. Casey sending it to the slot. Picked off by Lambie behind his net. He's cut down by Burns. No call there. Back out to center ice. Eight minutes and 38 seconds remaining in the period. Walter Kyle backs it off. Dick Lambie's there, number 23 for Boston University. Brings it up to center. Moving in. Miller. Stick handling. Skidmore played him like a harp and kicked that one away. There you see why Paul is one of the finer goaltenders in college hockey. Back out at center ice. Here's Miller again, making another soiree into the zone. This time, he tried to drop a pass back, and it was picked off. Back out through center ice and into the Boston University end. They're not calling icing in that because they felt Dick Lambie could have played it. So BU gets another turn on the breakout to center ice. 7.57 left, second period of play. BU's edge 4-2. Lambie feeds it right to O'Callaghan, and he sends it into the zone with a little help around the blue line from Cotter. Well, you know, you just can't give uh, BU, a team like BU, that many opportunities. And, uh, you know, you can rely on, uh, on a goaltender, but he can only stop so many. I don't care how good he is. If you get enough good opportunities, they're going to go in, John. Well, Craig grabbed that puck, and he dropped it off for O'Neill. But Martinelli, I think, is saying that Craig held it uh, long enough to Well, I think he was just causing a uh, blowing his quick whistle because a lot of times that happens. If you don't blow a whistle, he... The wing will go in and bang the goaltender, and a lot of times you have your little uh, to-dos in front of the net result from that. And I think it's good judgment in this game. Well, we're bringing this game to folks along the Eastern Educational Network. I'd like to say hello to the people in Lewiston, Maine at WCBB. Hope you're getting a kick out of it in Plattsburgh, New York, WCFC in Syracuse, WCNY in Hartford, Connecticut, WEDH in Durham, New Hampshire, it's WENH in Washington, D.C. tonight, WETA and in Norfolk, Virginia, WHRO. Hello to all of you. And we're hoping that you're getting a, well, kind of a boot out of this one. <laughs> Puck back in the zone and off the whistle. We'll have another center ice face off. That's an offside. A lot of people wonder why it's faced off down there, John. But actually, it, it, it comes from the origin of the pass. Uh, if you uh, pass a puck offside, it comes from where the pass originated. Where you carry it, it it's faced off right at the, that point in the blue line where you carried it over. All set for the faceoff now. Both teams even up at 5 on 5. 7.24 left in the period. Mark Sweetie drops it in for Barger. He sends it wide and high. Back off the wing board. Andy Tommaso centering pass. Pushed out of there. A quick spin by Kennedy. Sent it through the slot. Here's House's drive. That one knocked down in front. 
chop toward the net, but wide. Now the Eagles trying to put some pressure on here, and they've got some kids out there, like Mark Sweetai, working hard. And I tell you, he's a hard-working boy. I've seen him do uh, wonders on shorthanded situations. We've got a penalty coming up We've got another penalty uh, in front of the net. Uh, we get a penalty on Billy LeBlanc, who I think was holding uh, the BC player in front of the net. So it's holding on LeBlanc at 12.56, and that gives the Eagles a man advantage. And again, uh, they've got to have something going for them here. Time uh, certainly not running out, but still 27 and 4 uh, left in this game. That's 27 minutes and 4 seconds. How many of opportunities they had now on the uh, power play, John? Well, Boston College is so far 1 for 7 on power play opportunities and uh, that ratio I, uh, could be improved upon. Well it could and I think it's, it's been a key thus far in the game uh, which is a tribute to the penalty killers too I think. Uh. Kept in at the line. No! Augustine did not keep it in. Martinelli, <laughs> Martinelli was right on that line and he called it. Uh, Pretty hard to dispute it when he's <laughs> got his knee right down there. and There was that slight hesitation <laughs> and I thought that he had kept it in until uh, I guess it takes a little while to transmit the uh, message from the brain to the uh, lungs or something. I'm not going to second deck guess the referees, John. <laughs> <laughs> We're all set for the face-off just outside the line. No, you can't. No, but they've, they've, they've done a great job. They've I can, though. Here's Hammer. <laughs> he sends it up, knocked down by Mahar. And dumped all the way back into the BCN. BC in the power play. LeBlanc in the penalty box for another minute 45. Eagles trying the breakout. Amadon brings it up onto the left wing. It's in the zone. Here's the drive, and it's wide. Charging the puck is Amadon. Can he keep it in? Chopped back out to center ice, and it's the Terriers now on the move. Into the zone is Mahar, and he came looping in. It's whistled down by Fawcett. Well, you know, th that's an interesting play right there. He did not have control of the puck. Uh, he preceded the puck into the zone, but if he had full control of it, John, it would have been an onside play, but he did not have full control of it on his stick, so that's why the whistle was blown. I think BU has done an outstanding job killing these penalties, and uh, they're really taking it right to Boston College. They're going right in and forechecking. I noticed Dick Lambie is staying way up inside the offensive zone. Uh, uh, this could backfire against you, though. Unfortunately, this can leave a few two-on-one opportunities. Uh, Indeed it could, and of course uh, Boston University doesn't have that comfortable a margin as yet. At the line, comes to the left point. Lambie's sh shot is knocked down by Skidmore, and he's going to cover that one up. A two-goal margin in this game is not that comfortable. One would suspect that BU would like to fatten it a little bit before they start giving away two-on-ones and three-on-twos to BC. Well, they haven't given them away yet. Uh, you know, BC is a funny team. They take advantage of uh, of opportunities they have all year and that's why they're here. Off the faceoff, Hetnick tries to get it toward the net. They actually got it a couple of feet that way, but not enough. Paul Hammer breaks into the zone now for Boston College in the right wing corner. He was sending it back to the point and Hetnick hustled over and intercepted. Eddie Tomasso brings it back to the left. They're going to call this one down with a few hoots and toots from the crowd. we got another penalty coming. And this Boston is College Augustine, uh, is going to lose that advantage that they had uh, with a he minute four. Tony Meyer in center ice there. That's it. And Augustine goes off for two minutes. So goodbye power play chance for Boston College. Augustine for interference at 13.53 of the second period. I think this is the second time this evening that they've uh, negated their power play advantage by getting a penalty on, the, uh, on their power play, John. And this hurts. Uh, there's no doubt about it. I'm sure Lenny would like to see them uh, try to generate you know, a little bit more offense in the in the zone. BU just really hasn't let them set up in the zone on their power play. And I guess that's the key to stopping oh, the power play. There's Barrett. Oh, he tried to go for the far corner. It's wide. I think maybe uh, Craig had the angle on it. Just looked close well, enough Well, I'll from tell here. you, I don't know. It's pretty close. <laughs> Here's O'Callaghan, number 17. Again, a junior co-captain for Boston University. Drive, that's wide. Comes back along the wing board. Each club now a man short. LeBlanc is in for another 35 seconds for Boston University. Ewanowski backhand. Craig sweeps it away. Now it's Wallo knocking it behind the net. Picked up by O'Callaghan. Looks up ice. Feeds it now. Wing, wing left. Into the zone is Wallo. He's got it. Backhand. And it's saved by Skidmore. Skidmore was down and just got that glove out there and knocked it away. Skip House, number 17. 
House brings it up through center ice. Into the zone. Feeds it to Andy Tommaso. His drive is wide. And the wing breaking down to the left. Just couldn't get to the puck in time. Now it's Boston University's turn. Coming up ice. Solid check. Breaking up the play. But BU still controls the puck. Well, just as I say that, Andy Tommaso takes it away. He fires. And that's wide. O'Callaghan to the line. House fires. Knocked away by O'Neill. Here's O'Neill. Flipping it out of the zone. House knocks it down at center ice. And there was a flurry of activity for you. That, that was a great check by Charlie Andy Tommaso. Uh, that's something you don't see uh, very often now. The old day of a body check at center ice. That's uh, long gone, unfortunately. It was a great out, but uh, I think they, the, the boys skate so fast today, it's pretty hard to hit someone in, in, uh, in, in center ice. Here's Amadon. Picked away from him. Comes back out to the point. Lambie right point. Pushed up to the top of the circle. Comes right point. LeBlanc fires. It's wide. LeBlanc out of the penalty box. Augustine is still in for another 3-2-1. That's over. Back to equal strength. Oh, close call. Bethel tipping the puck in front of Skidmore. Brought it just too wide. BU still pressing the attack. John Bethel. Bethel feeds it behind the line for Fiddler. Brings it back out to the right point. Here's the drive. LeBlanc picked away by Skidmore. Back to the wing board. 3.49 left in the period. BU still pressing. Fiddler closing. He shoots. Loose puck. Skidmore stops it. And they call the play down. There's a little bit of wrestling out in front. Uh, but see, again, we don't want that to uh, detract from what Paul Skidmore just did. Just some uh, remarkable goaltending. But of course, uh, he's an acrobat. Well, he is. He's played so well, especially this period here. Uh, let's see if we can see it again, John. See the BC fella. This is, I think, th there shows what's happening tonight. They just are beating. Uh, Mark Filler just beat uh, uh, George Amadon to the puck, and, and BU has been beating them to the puck, and that's that's why they've been. Uh, that's why they're ahead right now. But you see, there's a great save right there by Paul Skidmore. He didn't leave the post. He he never he never makes the first move. In fact, he made a couple of other saves. Uh, uh, Paul Miller went in all alone uh, just a few minutes early, and. Uh, he plays that very well. Right. When you say he doesn't make the first move, well, he, allowed, he, makes he doesn't it. commit himself. He does not commit himself. And, uh, of course, that's an advantage oh. for a goaltender. Well, that's the, that's the key to it. Uh, if you commit yourself, that makes it easy for the forward. And he waits to the last minute right. and allows that forward to make his move. Come in and just dangle it on the end of the stick and try to get you to commit yourself. And when you do, it's bang. This is the last game in a Terrier uniform for Dick Lambie and Matt Martin and Brian DeRocher tonight. And for Boston College, Paul Barrett, Rob Riley, and Skip House are playing their last game as Eagles. Now, it's Boston University coming out of the zone. Mark Fiddler feeds it left for Bethel, picked off by Annie Tommaso. Annie Tommaso into the offensive zone, still controlling. Deep into the corner, sets it up, and it's broken up as the puck comes into the slot. We've got a penalty here. Charlie and Tommaso carried the puck deep into the zone, and now we have a penalty... Uh Ooh, uh, Mark Fiddler, I think, uh, I think he forechecked uh, Charlie going deep into the corner. Well, they're going to call it slashing Flash, well. at 1647. So Fiddler goes in for two. And here again, we've got the Eagles in a power play chance, Billy. They, they didn't have it for long last time because, of course, Augustine got that penalty and uh, that neutralized it. But... Uh, Let's see if they can take advantage well, you know, of something now. I guess they're one out of eight, is it? Uh, one out of one seven out of or one of eight. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, you just can't worry about that one out of eight. You've got to take it from here on in. And uh, this is an important power play for them. It would be very, pretty nice to go in 4-3 uh, or even get another one uh, before the end of the second period. I just want to, I think we'd like to say hello to uh, Chuck Toomey, who's a boy that uh, his father is the affable uh, uh, manager, manager of this, of this uh, great facility here in uh, uh, Chuck plays, uh, played at West Point this year and unfortunately uh, had to undergo a kidney operation recently and we just want to say hello to Chuck and tell him that everything is going well and his father's running a great tournament. Yeah, his uh, son is in the Philadelphia Naval Hospital and in Philadelphia they're watching this game on WHYY television. So uh, hi to everybody down there. <laughs> Hope you're enjoying it. Three minutes and 13 seconds left. Second period of play. 4-2 Boston University. And here is another Boston College power play opportunity. They have not been successful uh, to any great degree tonight, converting them certainly in chances one for eight so far. Mullen drive sticked away by Craig. So the Eagles would like to turn this one into a goal. 
That would be a kind of pure goal for them. Joe Mullen, number 21, from New York City, circling and heading back out of the zone. Cut down as he does, and he loses the puck, and it's a shorthanded bid by Hetnick, and he misses the mark. He was shifting it, backhand, forehand, and he really lost control of the puck sliding down but the right of Skidmore. There again, Skidmore made it difficult for him because he didn't stay up. He, he, right. he moved back into the, uh, into the net on it. Live for BC. That's right, he made Hetnick think about it. There's another shot. That's stick down right in front of the net. Yeah, another and thing going on in front of the net, which I didn't see because I was watching the puck come out to the point with Mike Ewanowski, but we... Here's, the, here's the, uh, the play with Mark Hetnick coming in. Tony Meyer made a nice play staying on side to get the puck to Mark Hetnick. You see him coming in all alone now. All right, Paul Skidmore now is going back into the net. Now, the fact that he went back in, cut down that angle, and made it difficult for him when he had to go on his back end, when he tried to just move to the side, he didn't give him that much opportunity. Well, there you go, and we've got a penalty on Paul Hammer for cross-checking at 17.33. So Boston College, for the third time, has neutralized their own power play chance. A cross-checking penalty on Hammer, and it's goodbye power play. Hello, four on four. BU has done or a... Or the uh, goodbye Broadway. <laughs> I sometimes forget. BU's done a fine job, John, on uh, on just giving BC just one shot. Uh, I don't think they've got uh, control of a rebound uh, off the BU, uh, in the BU uh, defensive zone all night long. Uh, they've got that one shot, and if Craig has made the save, uh, BU has always been the one to jump on the puck. They've beaten BC to the puck in their zone. Actually, they've beaten them all over, and, uh, and I think that's the reason they're ahead. Well, Paul Skidmore had some equipment repairs to effect. There's Coach Jack Parker. He's still working exactly the same pace line that he was, and <laughs> I hope chewing a different stick of gum now here in the second period of play. No wonder he stays so slim. There's Coach Len Siglarski. He's pacing now, too. Now, he's been relatively stable <laughs> through the course of this game. Started walking just as they said, well, let's, let's show the stable standstill coach. Well, there he is. Look pretty relaxed right yes. here now, John. I'd like to be that relaxed myself a few times. Boston University, eight penalties so far in the game, and BC, seven. That's relatively even. The only trouble with BC is that they seem to be getting a disproportionate share of their penalties when they're on the power play. And BU has capitalized on the power play. They're still working on a... Uh, had trouble with that ice, as yeah. I mentioned earlier, and uh, too bad it takes a little bit away from the continuity of the game. This hurts, too, uh, a team to get the, the penalties like that because, you know, you like to get your regular line shifts going and try to get some continuity to them so you can start to put some pressure on it. And I think the secret to... to uh, having success against BU is that you've got to forecheck them. You can't play a waiting game with them. I think all the teams that have had success are ones that have gone right at them and try to forecheck them in their own end and not let them get started. Once they get up in the center ice and throw the puck in and you allow that, then you're playing right into their hands. Here at center ice is Boston College with Augustine coming over the top of the puck. Almost caused a breakaway. Fortunately, however, for Boston College, Army got back on it in a hurry. Behind the net, stopped by Jim Craig, number 30, the goaltender for BU. And it's the Terriers trying to come out. Pass goes right out through center ice as Miller couldn't get a stick on it. Eddie Tommaso, good hustle back, gets it and turns back up ice. We've got 159 remaining in the second period of play. Charlie Eddie Tommaso breaks it in the right. He shifts. Lambie takes it away, falls down, it's still BU breaking out. Got a penalty on Charlie and Tommaso. And there's a drive by Boileau. They pulled Boston their goaltender. Boston University tender. has pulled their goaltender. They are now working with an extra man, but the puck is touched by Joe Mullen of BC. That means whistle, that means penalty, and it doesn't augur well for Boston College at this time. Well, that's a tough play. Uh, Charlie uh, made two great moves. He went around the defenseman at the blue line and made a good shift to cut into the inside and just lost the puck and when Dick Lambie picked it up he started to go up the ice and Charlie went to play it and of course got it caught in his feet and uh, there's nothing you can do about it it was there right in front of uh, Joe Fawcett and if it's right in front of you you've got to call it there's not too much discretionary judgment involved in something like that 18-20 the time of the penalty Andy Tommaso tripping so now we've got two Eagles in the perch and one terrier 
is sitting in the kennel. Now there. this is where where B would tough now. They, they'll eliminate everything from the uh, well. Right now they might not even have to Here's worry. A drive, silk stop by Skidmore, and the rebound was flicked wide. They start everything out with their two defense. Watch Lambiel come in and then throw the puck over to Callahan. It changed direction but went wide. Watch they'll try to get it out to the point, men. All right, that's Silk a, working on it, and he. Well, he was spinning, and so was House, and they just got too much on it. They made a good play on that, the uh, Boston College defenders. Now it's BU again, coming out of their zone. 110 left in the period. Terriers breaking in, skating. But he'll get set up now. With a four-on-three, five-on-three situation now, with two Eagles in the box. One minute, one minute. And their Watch man, right House. Throw it out to Lambie, and he'll take the shot. Oh. Lamby circles. He's trying to avoid that checker. Amadon coming out on him. Now sends it down. There's the deflection and attempt off the right side of the slot by Silk. But Skidmore watched it all the way in. Well, I tell you, that's where it's dangerous because Silk is on one side and uh, John Bethel is on the other. And if uh, Silk had directed that just a little bit out in front of Paul Skidmore, John Bethel was standing right there. Be you like to do this with two men down. They like to use their defense when they start to move in along the boards and then throw it back to their center point man and he'll just shoot with uh, one of the players standing right in front of the crease where he can try to distract the goaltender and of course then they've got their wings coming in for the side for rebounds. All set for the faceoff. Fiddler will take it for Boston University against Mullen. Comes back to the point man. Lambie feeds it right Watch point. Him. He O'Callaghan. goes right in. He'll throw the puck back to Lambie. Lambie drive. That one is stopped in front. The checker came right out on top of his stick. That was House. Now it's Mullen into the zone. Look at him, the whirling dervish. And he's back on his skates in a flash and looking for the puck again. Now, Boston Don't ever stop. Be you in. All right, now they're down to a five on four advantage with 24 seconds left in the period. 4-2, BU. Mullen coming into the zone. Not controlling the puck as he came in. Now Boston University again. This time Fiddler loses the puck. 14 seconds left in the period. The Eagles start back. Here's Paul Hammer. Hammer from Minnesota. Freshman into the circle. Sets it up in front. And nothing happened there as Augustine cutting through went down. He was the guy the it end. was directed for. And there goes the period. So it's four to two. BU, kind of a quiet period, actually, uh, with only one goal in that one. We uh, we saw a little bit more, obviously, in the opening period of play, but the Terriers are just a little bit more firmly in command than they were at the end of one. Of course, at the end of one period, it was three to two, Boston University. They chipped in one goal here, but the way things were going, Bill, uh, that's not so bad for BC. It could have been worse, it seems, uh, than it is right now. And Boston College is still within striking distance. Well, it could it could have been worse, John. And uh, you said it was a quiet period, but I think it was only in terms of scoring because Indeed. there was a lot of excitement. It was, uh, I think, a uh, much more wide-open period than a lot of coaches would like to see happen, <laughs> especially in a game like this. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities, and uh, I think Paul Skidmore really was the hero of that period where he came up on a number of... Uh, occasions with great saves which have kept them in the ball game and that's why it's 4-2 and uh, you know that anything can happen two goals is uh, is nothing in this game and especially it's so wide open <laughs> well there you have it four to two the score Boston University is out in front of Boston College here at the Providence C Civic Center and we'll be back with more NCAA hockey tournament action in just a little bit He deserves one, I'll tell you.
Boston University out in front of Boston College after two periods of play at the Providence Civic Center. The National Collegiate Athletic Association Ice Hockey Championship being played by two teams from Boston for the first time in the 31-year history of the tournament and the first time in five years that we've had two Eastern finalists as both Wisconsin and Bowling Green lost in the semifinal round of this tournament, of course, to BU and BC, respectively. With me right now is Bob Crocker, former assistant coach at Boston University, also former head coach at Penn, and now a scout for the New England Whalers. And Bob, we saw an awful lot of each other this winter in rinks around the East. Yes, we did, John. I'm going to feel like I'm your full-time assistant following <laughs> you from one game to another, but it's been very enjoyable, and I really hate to see it come to an end tonight. And uh, this is it, as a matter of uh, fact, because the season's over at the end of the Nationals, and here's the Nationals. And say la vie. <laughs> well, you know, when we first started uh, following college hockey games back in late November, uh, I don't think that either one of us could have predicted that we would have seen Boston University and Boston College meet for the championship. No, I'd agree to that, John. Far from it. Uh, in fact, uh, just a month ago, I would have given all types of uh, odds that this wouldn't happen, but uh, through uh, superb goaltending and it seemed like uh, BC just came all at once uh, to the occasion, uh, they found themselves. Through the luck of the draw, they're there, and uh, certainly Boston University has been uh, the most consistent team in college hockey throughout the nation and uh, I think deservedly uh, they should be where they are tonight. Well, we saw the Big Red of Cornell, whom we uh, suspected would be a very tough competitor coming to the ECAC tournament, knocked out in the opening round. We saw RPI, a team that can, can really score and, and, and a really dangerous team, knocked out by BC in that uh, opening round of the tournament. As a matter of fact, the only uh, seeded team that survived the opening round was Boston University, and they did it 6-5 to five in overtime against New Hampshire. So it was uh, really an explosive, I guess, uh, first round, the uh, elimination round of the tournament in the ECACs. I think it's, it's good for college hockey, too, John, because uh, certainly there seems to be a parity now where years back the top four seeded teams was almost automatic that... Uh, had they uh, got home ice, they were the winners, and they went into the gardens. This way here, uh, it sort of gives the other teams uh, a great opportunity and a great lift, and uh, I, for one, uh, enjoyed it very much. Well, we saw during the course of this year, and I know you were looking at college hockey players, some excellent young players, particularly uh, playing forward positions in college hockey this year. I think uh, there's a, just a, a passel, as we would say, in the hills of of uh, good forwards in Eastern hockey at least. Oh, I think that uh, just in this showing alone, John, that uh, certainly the East has by far showed and fared much better in this NCAA tournament than the West. And I think as far as all the positions are concerned, you could go right from, say, Paul Skidmore right out through the defense, right through the forwards. I, I would go for all the Eastern players myself after having watched this tournament. Well, you know, Bob, frequently people talk about the West, and because of the fact that they've won the Nationals over the past five years, uh, talked about them being uh, a superior uh, bit of competition, superior league out there, the Western and the Central, uh, more Western than Central, I would, I would guess, but uh, that hasn't proven out, surely, in this tournament. No, and, and the big difference that I can see, John, is the fact, naturally, the West, I think, plays a little slower tempo, but tried to play much more physical. But Boston University, as did Boston College, came right into this tournament and put an end to that by skating the teams right off the ice. And in, in particular, Boston University, who I felt just did a superb job of forechecking, say, the team right off the ice. And Boston College did likewise last night. Uh, Bowling Green did come back and play a very solid third period. And uh, thanks to Paul Skidmore, uh, the score yeah. was 6-2. to two. But uh, I think in both games, it was the East's skating ability that took the, away the prolificity of the physical uh, ruggedness of the uh, Western uh, philosophy. And uh, they do play a stride slower out there. And when you let them do uh, their thing, then uh, they're tougher because they do seem a little big, uh, bigger and physical. And uh, uh, if you let them play their game, uh, then they're going to be successful at it. But I, I give BU and BC credit. They uh, took it away by skating, and, uh, and much more so with Boston University by just forechecking them right off the ice. You know, when you're talking about uh, the East and the West, in this instance, Eastern, 
Uh, you're not talking just about colleges, really. You're talking about uh, players' homes. Uh, there, there are, I think, a few Minnesotans sprinkled into the lineups here. But uh, by and large, we're looking at Eastern developed hockey players. Yeah, uh, I, I think that kids like to basically go to their uh, regional schools. And uh, number one, they like to have their parents come. And certainly uh, that's a big thing. And uh, uh, they have a lot of fanfare and a lot of state recognition. So it is... Uh, uh, an east sort of west uh, geographical lo location because uh, predominantly uh, most of the uh, BU BC kids come from the New England area so I think it, uh, it it's great for New England hockey I think it shows that uh, we've come we're on the map and another thing I like to see is the fact that we're getting more American kids and they're playing a more predominant part and say the success of a team like say Boston University that just a few years back was uh, castigated as that uh, <laughs> yeah. all Canadian uh, team but uh, it's great to see, and I'm very, very pleased myself. Well, of course, they, they call it that, but now we're looking at a BU team that has, I believe, only four Canadians uh, on board. That's and, true. Uh, I, I met an old alumnus last night of, uh, of uh, American hockey players. I'm talking about, say, Boston College, and I said, who are you going to root tomorrow? Uh, are you going to root for Boston University with all those American hockey players? And he had to agree that, uh, you know, BU has done a superb job in going out and getting the local kids, and... It's just great to see that they are being able to, say, come to BU and making such a contribution, just like, say, uh, the Fiddler kid, who I think has had just a superb year for a freshman hockey player. And then his counterpart, uh, O'Callaghan and Carter, and uh, just from Charlestown alone, they've just, uh, just sensational. I, I just admire them to the nth, nth degree. You know, it's interesting that the breeding ground for so many college basketball players, New York City, has produced such an excellent skating forward as Joe Mullen. Well, Joe, uh, you know, he uh, ceases to amaze me. I I'll tell you, I just have fallen on him. I've been uh, hot on him, then I cooled off on him, and then uh, toward the end of the year, he just had a sensational uh, close. And uh, the thing that makes Joe so great is the fact that I think his heart is as big as his body. And he's a true competitor, and I think he's a bona fide uh, professional prospect. I'm not saying that he could come right up and play immediately, but I do think that he is a genuine prospect that will get a chance to play professional hockey. But he's a great competitor and a great contri uh, great uh, product of, say, that Brooklyn uh, <laughs> farm club that they have down there. <laughs> That's right. Well, Bob Crocker, scout for the New England Whalers, former coach at Boston University and Pennsylvania. Thank you very much for being with us. Nice to see you again. Thank you, John. It's a pleasure being on. And we... That's Bob Crocker, who has toured the college hockey scene throughout New England and the East, and as a matter of fact, has ranged into other parts of the country to find out just who's who. And you heard some of his views on college hockey players here in the East. Hope you enjoyed them. And that's the way it is right now here at the Providence Civic Center in Providence, Rhode Island. Well, with us is Ron Mason, the head hockey coach at Bowling Green, who today won the third place trophy in the NCAA tournament with a 4-3 victory over Wisconsin. And I might say, Ron, that your club this afternoon in the consolation round played very well against the Badgers. We were pleased. Uh, we played four periods of hockey here, John, which isn't enough to win two <laughs> games, unfortunately. But uh, we were happy to be able to back today all those American hockey players and he had to agree that uh, you know BU has done a superb job in going out and getting the local kids and it's just great to see that they are being able to say come to BU and making such a contribution just like say uh, the Fiddler kid who I think has had just a superb year for a freshman hockey player and then his counterpart uh, O'Callaghan and Carter and uh, just from Charlestown alone they've just uh, just sensational I, I just admire them to the nth, nth degree you know, it's interesting that the breeding ground for so many college basketball players, New York City, has produced such an excellent skating forward as Joe Mullen. 
Well, Joe, uh, you know, he uh, ceases to amaze me. I I'll tell you, I just have fought on him. I've been uh, hot on him, then I cooled off on him, and then uh, toward the end of the year, he just had a sensational uh, close. And uh, the thing that makes Joe so great is the fact that I think his heart is as big as his body. And he's a true competitor, and I think he's a bona fide uh, professional prospect. I'm not saying that he could come right up and play immediately, but I do think that he is a genuine prospect that will get a chance to play professional hockey. But he's a great competitor and a great contri uh, great uh, product of, say, that Brooklyn uh, <laughs> farm club that they have down there. <laughs> That's right. Well, Bob Crocker, scout for the New England Whalers, former coach at Boston University and Pennsylvania. Thank you very much for being with us. Nice to see you again. Thank you, John. It's a pleasure being on. And we... That's Bob Crocker, who has toured the college hockey scene throughout New England and the East, and as a matter of fact, has ranged into other parts of the country to find out just who's who. And you heard some of his views on college hockey players here in the East. Hope you enjoyed them. And that's the way it is right now here at the Providence Civic Center in Providence, Rhode Island. Well, with us is Ron Mason, the head hockey coach at Bowling Green, who today won the third place trophy in the NCAA tournament with a 4-3 victory over Wisconsin. And I might say, Ron, that your club this afternoon in the consolation round played very well against the Badgers. We were pleased. Uh, we played four periods of hockey here, John, which isn't enough to win two <laughs> games, unfortunately. But uh, we were happy to be able to come back today and play as well as we did in the third period last night. Well, Bowling Green, I thought... Uh, came out in the first and second periods against Boston College uh, playing I'd say lethargically in the third period you started to play hockey you're right it was just a little bit too late you turned it on scored two goals kept the pressure on the good tight checking at least you were able to uh, inculcate in your players the desire to do that again today well it was tough today and uh, of course we've played very very well all year long uh, we've you know played the way we have the last four periods all year long and it was uh, almost unbelievable to us that we were so lethargic. Uh, I think maybe it was the fact we were the first time here and uh, we were bombarded by a lot of press and a lot of other things. And I think our players uh, went out and played uh, like a lot of people said they should play instead of going out and play the way they could. And it was very difficult for us. And I think once uh, BC got ahead 5 nothing, said to ourselves, listen, guys, let's just go out and do our job and see what happens. And when we did that, uh, we played the way we were capable. And saved a little face that first night because it was really dis disappointing for us the way we were playing in the first two periods. Well, Bowling Green, Ohio has still made its mark as far as college hockey is concerned. Uh, being in the tournament is a big thing, I think. A, a good step up for your program. It, it's a very young program. No question about that. It's going to help recruiting, uh, certainly. And uh, we're, you know, we were very happy to be here in the first place. It's been a long, hard battle for our league. And, and of course, our team last year, we got it to the NCAA Regional in the West and lost to Michigan 7-5 to and this year we got one step further by virtue of being in the finals and you know there's only one game left that could be played and that's the game tonight so uh, I think in another year uh, we lose six hockey players off our team and basically five to play today and uh, if the recruiting goes away we think there is a possibility now that we've sensed it we could get back but of course you need a lot of breaks to get here in the final four and uh, we're very, very happy. We have a lot of great fans from Bowling Green. A lot of us followed us down here and so on. And I think that now we realize we can do it, and it's going to give our players a lot of confidence. And uh, we're just very happy to be a part of the whole thing. It's been a very successful tournament. I think the fan involvement's been excellent. When you have Wisconsin in a tournament, uh, that makes it even better because of the band and everything. And, of course, this afternoon's game was also almost like a championship game, the way everybody played. So... Uh, we're very, very happy to be here, and of course, uh, happy we were able to at least win the Constellation uh, round and take home a trophy. Now, you're looking at uh, the two teams that won in the semifinal round, BU, BC. What are your views on the game through two periods now, Ron? I think BU has a stronger hockey team, no question. Uh, I think that they missed two or three golden opportunities in the second period, 
I do feel that uh, it's tough to come right back and play tonight like we did this afternoon, and I think with BU's rest, the depth that they have, I think it's going to show here in the third period. The only thing that would get BC back into it would be a very quick goal. If they could do that, I think it could be anybody's hockey game. But to me, uh, BU has the depth. They've got the talent, and I think they're going to be an easy winner, especially if they get the next goal. Boston College unable to really capitalize on their power play opportunities so far in this game, and, and that's hurt them, uh, their inability to uh, convert even at their normal season percentage. Right. Well, you know, BU has a great checking hockey team, and they've got depth, like I say, in every area. Uh, their penalty killing is no exception, and they do a good job at it. And it seems like uh, when they get a good chance, maybe they're forcing it a little bit. Uh, you know, that's, that's a tendency sometimes. And maybe they just hold it an extra second and take the good shot. Uh, it might, might make a better chance for them. But uh, I think BU's got it all, and I think this is going to be their year. Well, Ron Mason, Bowling Green head coach, congratulations on your team's performance this afternoon, winning the third place trophy, and upward and onward for your Bowling Green program. Well, let's hope so. Thanks, John. Ron Mason of Bowling Green here in the NCAA Championship Tournament at Providence Civic Center. And, of course, we're after two periods with Boston University leading Boston College by a score of 4-2. to two. Got a lot more hockey for you in the next 20 minutes. Stand by. You know, the Eagles could fly. And, of course, we've got Bill Cleary here to help explain the whole thing for you. I'm John Carlson, and we're just going to roll down to the ice now and find out what's happening as both clubs have taken their positions. We're just about ready for the drop of the puck and the start of action here in the third and final period of play. So let's turn down, see what they're doing. Both clubs on the ice taking their skate around as they prepare for combat in that third period of play. And we would suspect that Len Siglarski has had a nice little talk with his guys. Maybe something about, hey, when we get a power play, let's get off it and stop going into the penalty box 40 seconds in. Well, of course, that's one, uh, one area that they are obviously concerned about, but I think they've just got to be concerned with the way B are skating, John. They're playing so well. They're forechecking extremely well. It doesn't matter whether they're a man up, a man down, or even strength. They've just played a fine hockey game, and uh, and this is when, they, when they're when they on uh, top form is when they're forechecking, and they are doing it, and they're coming back. They're checking their wings, uh, and it's pretty hard to, uh, to dent that defense. Uh, even when you throw it in, the wings are not getting in there to get the puck, and uh, it's pretty hard, and uh, I think you just have to go at them. There's nothing to lose now. They've just got to... Throw all caution to the wind and, uh, and go in and try to really put some pressure on BU. There's Jack Parker again. Now he's got the edge and he's still pacing and chewing, <laughs> chewing and pacing. And there's the long shot from our end camera looking down over the shoulder of Jim Craig, the Boston University goaltender, number 30, in the net tonight and having the advantage of a two-goal lead as the puck is dropped for the start of the third and final period of play and, of course, the battle for the national championship raging right in front of our very eyes. This is it. Puck comes back out toward the line, controlled by Joe Mullen. Mullen makes the turn, gets by one. Puck slides off his blade. He dumps it deep into the zone as Lambie checks him into the boards. And the penalty on up. Charlie Antitomaso is up. And Boston College is back to full strength. Silk slides it into the zone. That's offside and clearly offside as Fiddler was scooting in already just uh, off to the right of Dave Silk. So they'll drop it just outside the BC zone. 19 minutes, 30 seconds left in this hockey game. And we're all set to see as Fiddler chases the puck into the attack zone. Can't keep it there, however. And it's Boston College possession. Hammer behind the net. Drops it off for Amadon. Amadon backs it behind his own cage. Fiddler sneaks around to get it. Goes down. And it's Hammer coming out of the zone of the left wing. Here's Hammer center ice. He flips it into the right wing corner. And Boston College goes on the attack. Mullen cut down as he goes deep into the zone looking for the puck. It's the Terriers back out. There's a breakaway. Got Fiddler in. He scores! Outstanding play, standing right from their own end. David uh, Silk received, I think he received a pass from Dick Lambie, and he didn't even bother to let it, you can see it, he just directed it right to Mark Fiddler. And uh, I think this is a, a sign of uh, the hockey player that Mark is. If we recall, 
on two or three different occasions prior to this. Everyone has tried to deke Paul Skidnor, has not been successful. Mark, I sure realize that, and he notices that, that uh, Skidmore does go down a little bit. You see that direction of the pass. That was a great play by Silk, and he just rifled that puck up into the corner. And, of course, a great play by Fiddler as he kept the puck off to his side where he could work it on Skidmore, who realized that. And you're right, he, he got him down and pulled the trigger. Well, it's 5-2. to two. At 101 of the third period, Fiddler from Silk and Lambie. Boston University leads by three goals. And the Eagles now get to charge their battery and get this thing popping. Bobby Hare trying to do just that, trying to set it into the slot, but it's intercepted by Boileau, and he sends it out on the right wing to Hetnick. Mark Hetnick breaks in. Here's Hetnick scooting into the circle. And it's picked off his stick right back to the board. The Eagles coming out. That was Fiddler's 30th goal of the season. A freshman drive by Hare. Craig made the stop, stumbled back into his crease, but he's all right. Looked so he was going to go down. Well, he came out quite a way to cut down the angle on that, and I think he just lost his balance. Pushed behind the net, sent back out in front, but again, BU controls near their own cage. Barrett sends it on the corner, and Craig pulls it in. BU really are playing as well as I've seen them play this year right now. They're doing everything in every phase of the game and doing it well. Well, it's a team that had great promise at the start of the season. Jack Parker said, let's wait. Let's be cautious. Got five freshmen. You don't know what's going to happen with five freshmen, but of course he was <laughs> talking about a freshman like Mark Fiddler with, with 30 goals, 35 assists. Paul Miller, who's facing off now, has had an uh, outstanding year. And of course there's Cotter. Oh. And there's uh, McLeod Todd Johnson, a freshman from Wayland, Massachusetts. Joe Augustine goes back, cuts in behind the cage, brings it out on the left for Rob Riley from West Point, New York, where his dad coaches hockey. And it's pushed out to center ice, but controlled again by BU as Lambie circles on the puck. The Eagles trying to get it into that attacking zone, but having a few problems doing it. Jack O'Callaghan starts up for the Terriers, swept off his stick. It's still a push. Daryl McLeod breaks into the zone over the blue line, and we're talking about a freshman from Melrose, Massachusetts, on the BU roster. But, of course, uh, Boston College, as we said, has a few, too, with Paul Hammer, a uh, freshman who's played very well this year. Bobby Hare is a freshman. Ewanowski uh, has had a fine season for uh, Boston College. Mark Sweetie has made some exciting plays for them. So they've got a few of their own. O'Callaghan dumps it into the zone. I've seen all of those fellas too much this year, John. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to hear about <laughs> I them. haven't had too much success against either team. Bill Clary, the head coach of Harvard University, here with us tonight. I'm John Carlson from the Providence Civic Center, and things are going strong for the Boston University Terriers here in the national championship game. See the way they're covering up for each other. Skip House feeds it out to the right. It's Lambie hustling back to pick it up and dump it out of the zone. Darrell McLeod, number 19, fires it in, and Skidmore's got to glove it up. Here's House bringing it out in the left. Snaps it to center ice. Barger throws it in. Craig has got to put the glove on it. He dumps it off to his left. 16-34 remaining. Kept in by Barger. Good work, goal! Boston College gets on the board in the third period as Barger connects. And it's 5-3. I just said through saying that they're playing so well in all phases. They just got a little careless in that uh, Cajun coming out. And they made a bad pass out. And BC was there to capitalize. There it is. Steve Barger, he's a sophomore from Farmington, Minnesota. He got the feed apparently from Bill Kennedy. We'll check the assists as they come in. He did. It's Barger at 3.30 from Sweet Tie and Kennedy. And it's 5-3. Boston College gets a marker here in the third period. Hey, maybe they can make this interesting. That's a big goal. You know, that's all that some teams uh, need, just a, a little impetus to, uh, to get going. And maybe that might be it for Boston College. 16-16 remaining in the hockey game, at least in regulation. Don't forget in college hockey, if it ends in a tie at the end of regulation, it's a 10-minute sudden-death overtime frame to decide a winner. 
And of course, in the national championship game, it's more than that if it's still a tie after the first sudden death frame. Coming back out to center ice, Army. We're here for the night, board. John. <laughs> well, that would be fun, Bill. <laughs> Comes back out along the wing board. For us, not for the two coaches down in those boxes. We have a long way to go before Mullen we get that. Craig punches it back out to the wing board. Amadon keeps it deep. The Eagles trying to keep the pressure on Boston University now. Get back into this hockey game. Augustine fires. Craig gloves her, drops her off. And on the left is Belanson. Here's Belanson breaking up through center ice. He's in with the attacking zone. Goes down over the blue line. And we've got a whistle on the play anyway. That's one of the few times tonight that they have not hit me in the puck. And I don't think uh, John Melanson realized that Todd Johnson was all alone up at the far blue line. I don't think he realized it until too late. And then finally he had to carry the puck. And Todd just could not straddle the line that long. They have hit me in the puck. And that's been the secret to them. When they come out of that zone, they don't hold on to it when there's a fellow up ahead of them. And that's the way you got to play this game. Casey throwing it deep, but again, the Eagles will chase it into the zone. Paul Barrett scoots in, heads squarely for that net, and I think we had a high stick direction on the puck, which stops play, and the faceoff will take place to the left of Jim Gray. Whenever you hit a puck above your shoulders, uh, no matter where it is in the ice, the puck is brought back to your own defensive zone and faced off at one of the faceoff circles. Five minutes, or rather 15 minutes and 17 seconds left in regulation. Here's the draw. Bobby Hare, number 24 for BC. Sweetai couldn't control it. Fiddler just chased it right out to center ice, and now the Eagles are back in, but that's offside. It'll come back out to center ice in a special spot for the draw. 5-3 the score. BU is out in front, and they've got something going. We'd like to say hello to a few more folks in Hershey, Pennsylvania, WITF is carrying tonight's game in Schenectady, New York. It's WMAT, College Park, Maryland, WMBP. In New York City, New York, where Joe Mullen's friends are, why WNET is carrying tonight's contest. And I know there are a whole lot of folks around the southern Connecticut, Long Island, northern New Jersey area watching as well uh, on that channel. So hello, everybody. We hope you're enjoying it. Let's get right back to it with the Eagles trying to bring the puck out of their own zone with 14.45, close call, and a little bit of a misplay, at least a misbounce, gives Boston University an opportunity close. But there again, if you can see, uh, they're forechecking very well. They're not giving them an opportunity to make that play. You see, Charlie didn't have a place to pass the puck. He tried to throw it back to Casey, his other defenseman, but it never got that far over. And uh, Joe Casey was standing too far over in the corner for it. The BU player came right in and intercepted it. And close call, a little bit of trouble, and of course a little more pressure for Paul Skidmore. See now there it is, dropped back off to the left side. You see it coming along the wing board, out to center ice. Barrett throws it into the offensive zone, but it doesn't get deep. Knocked down by Lambie, and Lambie, the senior from Auburn, Massachusetts, brings it to center, feeds it on the left wing. There's the feed for Silk, breaking down the slot. Skidmore right there. All right, it's Barrett on the left wing. Paul Barrett picked off by O'Callaghan. Jack O'Callaghan feeds along the left wing board back out to center ice by Boston University. We're down to 14 minutes left in regulation of this game as Lambie, number 23, picks it up for BU. Lambie played on the last U.S. Olympic hockey team. Poked off his stick by Kyle, but it's controlled by O'Callaghan out of the zone. And he puts a roller in. Skip House. Tipped out the center ice. Brian Burns from Arlington, Massachusetts. Brings it in, drops it off for Rob Riley. He tries to set it up, but it's knocked down by LeBlanc. And now Tony Mahar breaks it out. Mahar is into the attack zone, working on House. He's knocked down. There's a bit off the left with the loose puck, but Skidmore sticks it to the wing board. Now LeBlanc trying to set it up. Drops it deep, but it's intercepted by Boston College. They're going to bring it back out. Rob Riley backs it off toward the BUN. 13 minutes and 12 seconds left now. BU still holding the edge. Kyle spins. He's cut down. House picks it up on a wing board. Look out. He's got a break. It's Wallo coming up on the left wing. He scoots in. Augustine back. Well, he did his job cutting him off. And it came back out through the slot. And no chance for Hetnick. The Eagles got out of what could have been a very serious jam. Well, you know, they came back well. Their, their wings came back and caught that trailer because that's a dangerous fellow. And that could have been the... 
Guitai trying to set it up, and LeBlanc breaks it up. Barger puts it on the corner. Craig sticks it away. That could have been the fellow that was a dangerous one in that play, but the BC uh, wing came back very well to pick up that man. All right, again, it's the Eagles dumping it into the Boston University end. This time, Craig covers it up to his left. He saw the wing scooting down that board and decided he didn't want to fool around at all. Bill Kennedy was moving in. No loose rubber for Craig. He remembers the first goal. Oh, was it the second goal? I can't remember which one when they got mixed up there. 12-24. I think that was the second one. Second one, John. When in doubt, though, it's better to, to freeze the puck and get a face-off, get yourself regrouped. Lamby behind his own net. Stick handles, looking now for the breakout. Checkers in for BC. That's Miller circling. Comes back to O'Callaghan. Now Lamby is going to have to circle. Some effective work as the two men up for Boston College. Pressure the puck now down to Miller, and Miller dumps it in on Skidmore. You played that very well coming out of the end. Miller wraps it around the boards at the point. O'Callaghan got too much ice. Not a good shot. Sweetai breaks into the zone, but it's taken away by Lamby. Lamby just picked it off Mark Sweetai's stick, and he stands it right out the center ice. Miller trying to set it up. Comes back to the right wing board. Now it's loose. McLeod goes down for it. He can't get it. O'Callaghan tries the shot, and it's Skidmore's save. Back to the board and tied up there with 11.33 remaining now in the third period. 5-3 BU. And we've had no penalties here in the first eight minutes of the third period, Bill. It's a, a total of 16 penalties in the first two frames. Well, I think they realize that they just can't afford uh, penalties at this time. Uh, a goal here either way could be dangerous to any team. I think BU showed great uh, poise there coming out of the zone on that last uh, rush up the ice. Uh, B BC defensed them pretty well, but uh, they went into the different options. They like to use their defense in the corner and throw it over to him and then up to the center or up to the wing. And uh, BC shut it off and they went back to each other. They played it very well. Didn't lose their four. No, they didn't. Back out to center ice now. And again, it's dumped by the Eagles. Craig goes behind his own cage to stop it. Hammer was charging, but he couldn't get in behind. Back out toward the point for House. No chance. Now it's Fiddler on the break. Fiddler drives. He can rip him, can he? Covered by Skidmore as Bethel was blowing in on the left side looking for a possible rebound. Well, there again, the defense has played it well and just uh, allowed Mark Fiddler to carry the puck and not make that pass so Paul Skidmore can just play. Uh, there he is. Now see the defense who stands right in the middle forcing Fiddler to take the shot and actually probably shot the puck out a little farther than he would have liked to. Probably could have carried in a little bit farther. Jim Craig made a nice play, though, passing that puck off to their uh, defense to start that offensive play. Well, there's a bit of uh, roughness going on in that front of the net. John Bethel was the guy that was closing, and he started having a little bit of a problem. As, of course, uh, defensemen just don't like forwards hanging around, and Joe Casey took umbrage at the presence of John Bethel. So we well, I have, think, uh, uh, I think uh, we've got a little something going here, the first penalties of the third period. Well, I think it's, uh, they're just trying to make sure they keep it under control. Tempest can flare a little bit, especially with the importance of such this game. Well, they're putting four minutes up for Casey. Bethel is getting four minutes as well. We may just get a little bit of... Uh, well, they might get roughing and high sticking. We'll have to wait for the call, John. And we'll have that in just a moment. So two players go off, and it just evens things up on the ice with both clubs now skating four. I noticed Joe Mullen out here now. Of course, a, a player like Joe Mullen likes this uh, situation because it gives you a lot more uh, ice to, to free, free wheel and uh, there's that one less player on the ice. Lambie tries to set it up in the slot. It's broken down. And now we've got the movement as BC's Mullen moves into the zone. But he's taken off the play, and Lambie collects. Double minor penalties for Boston College. Double minors being announced Joe now. Casey. Silk is in. Silk closes it, sinks it through. Two minutes for roughing. Now back to the point. Lambie, O'Callaghan, drive, wide. Fiddler chases to the board. Two minutes Kept in by Lambie. Another drive, another save by Skidmore. In behind the net. On the corner. Skidmore protecting that post. Nine. He doesn't want to leave any room at the edge, and there you have it, and there you have the penalties. Casey and Bethel 
high sticking and roughing as they got double minor. I call it right, John. You were right <laughs> on it. You know, the, the referee took a, a real shot off that deflection uh, on, the, on the puck shot by John Callahan. I, I thought, to be uh, all right. I I thought for a minute that uh, David Silk was hurt there. He took a terrible fall into the uh, boards, but didn't seem to affect him. He got right up and was standing out in front of that net looking for tippins. But I, he really went crashing into the boards and, uh, with his back, and I thought he was hurt there. You know, a real scorer could have a broken leg and it'd still be looking for a tippin out in front of the <laughs> net. You ought to know that. Here's Hetnick. That's right. You Didn't don't get you that stand many out in front of a net with a broken leg one. That's, I don't know if I did that, but uh, <laughs> here's Lambie closing. He shoots and it goes over the top. You don't get that many opportunities. That's the way you score, right out there. Here's Hare, number 24 for BC. Feeds it left. Paul Barrett trying to break. Can't get by Dick Lambie. Lambie is going to go off. Dick Lambie, who has three. Let's see if we can watch tonight, it. Uh, actually. Dick had a pretty good angle on him, but put his hand out and I think grabbed him. Perhaps we can see this on the replay. Well, the time of the penalty will be 10.03 of the third period. Very interesting right now, John. Lambie for holding, and here it is. Coming up. Here's Paul Barrett cutting into the center ice. You see Dick steps up on him, but gets that arm out, see? And just spins him right around. That's a good call. Good call. And so, we're going to have an opportunity here on BC's part for a man advantage. They will skate four men against three men. We still have uh, just about ten minutes to go in this game, uh, this period, and, uh, you know, a goal here now could uh, make it very interesting, John. Certainly would. You get within one in this hockey game, and you're right back up there, and of course, a definite contender. BC with a, an opportunity. Let's see what they've got going. Comes back to Augustine, number three, brings it up to Ewanowski. Ewanowski is working the left wing. He feeds it wing to wing right. Now he's got Army cruising toward the slot. The setup doesn't work. It's cleared by Hetnick for Boston University. And so Ewanowski has to move back and pick it up from BC and start all over again. This is a time when they just want to set up. He's letting him come right in. There's the try by Ewanowski, and it's knocked down in front. Johnson. Johnson fires. Skidmore had to make the stop. He had to close the pads on that one. Here goes Joe. And now, let's see a little bit of loose freewheeling action here. As Mullen breaks into the zone, taking off the play. Army is there. He's got the puck. They might be able to get something going. No, can't get it through the defense. Kept in by Augustine. Joe Augustine feeds it back. They tried to set up Mullen. Mullen knocked it down. I think they just may stop playing this because Mullen directed it back out to the point with a gloved hand. You cannot do that. You can knock the puck down, but you can't advance it. Can't direct to a it to your from the uh, same team. That's right. And that's what he did. So we're going to have a face-off outside the zone. That was a tough break. Uh, Joe Mullen was trying to make a good play there, trying to keep it away from BU, but of course he had to direct it to his own teammate. They still have a minute. Uh, what do we have here? 56 seconds to go on this uh, penalty, and I think if they can just get it in and get it set up a little bit instead of rushing this shot, uh, they might be in better position. And would like to remind you that you're watching here on the Eastern Educational Network, College Hockey, Boston University versus Boston College. Jack O'Callaghan made a great play there, which the average fan wouldn't even notice, but he didn't retreat back into the zone. A lot of times the defense will just skate way back into the zone, but he stayed right at the blue line and forced that offside. All set for the draw now outside the blue line, 8.47 left in regulation, 5-3. The score, BU out in front. Boston College working with a man advantage here now. Lambie's in for another 43 seconds for BU. Let's see what the Eagles do. Into the zone. Hare with it. Hare coming over the top of the slot. He now holds. He cranks, fires, sticked away by Craig. Back to the wing board. Controlled there by Boston University. Hare goes down trying to keep the puck in the zone. 
Here's Hare moving up. He kept it in. He went down and walked up on a backhand save. Craig picked up now behind the cage. And Boston College continues the assault. Barrett brings it out point. And it comes out. So save. Oh, they couldn't get it loose. Barrett tries to spin the net. He's flattened behind the cage. That may have saved the day. And flatten Paul Barrett, and that was a big one. Barrett's trying to go right around the net and just scoop it right in the other side. Let's watch it here. He's going right in and trying to stuff it in. Craig is the one that came back, made an outstanding play. If you notice, he went with his stick. He knew he couldn't reach it, and that stick is an extension of his arm and forced him to go, you know, that much farther. If, you, if we can go back again, you watch his stick is really uh, uh, the one that uh, saved the puck from going in. Well. I tell you, that was a moment of breathtaking excitement, <laughs> huh? There was some pressure on Craig and Boston University, B.C., working with a man advantage. And they put some pressure on, but couldn't quite do it. Lambie's now out of the penalty box, and the power play is over for the Eagles. But I think that time they did some service on it. Give Mark, Mark Ketnick some uh, credit on that, because he well, is Well, Har closing. He's broken up. He played very well uh, on that... Uh, killing of the two men down situation. All right, the Eagles again moving into the attacking zone. Seven and a half minutes of the period. Augustine puts it on net. Frey stops and covers. Then we're going to have a face off. You, know, you mentioned Hedrick, and I think we've mentioned him before, but, you know, whenever they go into that man short situation, they put number four of BU on the ice. And he just does a remarkable job. He gets, uh, you know, there are some people that think... He is one of the top players uh, on that club, and uh, they're not so far wrong. Well, unfortunately, a lot of people just look at the uh, goals and assists and when they judge a player, but, uh, you know, a boy like Hetnick does so many things out in the ice, and really you need those fellas if you're going to be successful. Back to the wing board, Lambie goes after it. Picked up by Fiddler, and it's Fiddler starting it out. Makes a nice move with the puck, breaking into center ice. Tries to center it into the zone, and it's picked off there. He's still chasing the puck. Like he's wound up, but he just isn't going to stop. Here's Amadon. Circling, spins it around behind his own cage for Andy Camasso up along the wing board. Trying to pop it out, kept in by the Terriers. Here's Fiddler again. This time it's chopped out to center ice. 5-3. Boston University out in front for the national championship. I'm John Carlson along with Harvard coach Bill Cleary here at the Providence Civic Center. And we're coming down into the final half dozen minutes of the game. Burns along the board, tries to move it. The Terriers still working in that offensive zone, keeping it in a long time. Eagles finally get a breakout. They got a three on two developing. Let's see what they do with it. Well, the pass cut by the man. Oh, picked up in the zone. Burns, however, couldn't get the shot off as Lambie came out and took it away from him. Here's Danny Tommaso, flattened by Bethel, but he gets the puck into the zone. Kyle was all alone if that puck uh, had got through uh, Dick Lambie. Comes back out to Lambie. Lambie breaks through center ice. Lambie drives, and that save by Skidmore, he punches it into the crowd. I'll tell you, that's a big help to have a uh, fellow like Dick Lambie who can carry the puck out of your zone. Whenever you have pressure on you, it's nice to have that fellow that can go back to you, get it out, and relieve the pressure. And uh, he's so strong. He's, he's big, he's strong, he carries the puck very well. Of course, he saw that he can shoot the puck on that last shot on Paul Skidmore. Well, here we are down to about the final six minutes to see the Boston College Eagles band working away. And they're right up behind the BC net right now. Well, they've been in the same place all night. It's just the net line to change the addition, of course. At the conclusion of tonight's game. So we're on the way down. And, of course, Boston College got some work to do to climb this hill and get back into the game. 5-3. Not all the way gone. Barger chases the puck into the zone, can't control it, and now the Terriers are breaking out. Johnson headbands the pass. Into the zone, it's Cotter, number three, sets it up in front. Johnson came down the slot, couldn't reach it. Melanson chases it to the corner. Now it's Johnson trying to set it up. Point man O'Neill. He whips. O'Neill whips, and now it's the Eagles coming back. Got a two-man break, but it's on two. Craig makes the save. There's one off the post as it came right back at him. He took it off the chest, couldn't control the rebound. And Kennedy just chopped it right on back and banged it off the iron. That's it. He just uh, took that rebound. No one's there to pick it up and shot it. Hit, actually hit to the side of the uh, 
that uh, when it hits on the side of that, it, uh, it sounds a lot closer than it was, John. I think it uh, when I where it starts to go around there. But uh, the point being is that he he did get the shot. There's perpetual motion, uh, sometimes known as Jack Parker. He's just still pacing and chewing. Well, Jack's done an outstanding job in his years at uh, Boston University. Have always been well coached, well disciplined teams, as have Lenny Seglaski team uh, teams, and I think they're a credit to uh, to college hockey. And uh, it's nice to see uh, two uh, Eastern teams and I guess two Boston teams uh, uh, right here, where the uh, showcase of NCAA hockey. I'm sure all coaches and all players and fans are very proud of these two teams. Well, I think it had started to uh, become a, a depressant over the past few years to have Western teams uh, dominate that NCAA tournament. There were frustrations developing. Uh, the knowledge, I think, within uh, the coaching fraternity that, hey, you know, we're... We're not inferior to the West. We just happen to be going out and having trouble in a, in a two-game tournament. We hope you'll forgive us, but we're not that bad. Well, of course, it's been proven here in this tournament that that's the truth. There's Paul Barrett, number 20, from South Boston, talking with his coach, Len Saglarski, Joe Augustine, number three, from Chicago, Illinois, the big defenseman, also getting a few words of advice. Well, you know, you, you mentioned about the West domination. Uh, they're requesting... Uh, that's right. Uh, Jim Craig has gone into the player box. A 10-minute break has been requested because Jim Craig apparently has sustained some sort of an injury. Well, I see so him. So BU uh, is uh, requesting a break. He's sitting in there. Uh, well, on the case, in case of an injury, uh, a goaltender is allowed 10 minutes. Uh, if at the, time, at the end of 10 minutes... He's not uh, recovered, then they will have to put another goaltender in who will be given five shots, and then the play will have to pr uh, proceed. You know, you talked about uh, Western domination. Uh, I guess it's the last five years that uh, they've dominated, but uh, we've had two of those teams uh, that have been a part of that domination, and, and someone was mentioning it to me today, and, you know, we were out to St. Louis, and I think we lost by one goal to Minnesota in the semifinal. And we lost uh, a goal in overtime to Tech 6-5 to uh, in the Garden uh, a few years back. And at the same time, BU had lost as the other Eastern representative uh, by one goal. And that's gone on several times. So really, if you call that domination, that, th those games were so close. Uh, uh, trouble is that they have won, but, uh, you know... the. There's not that much difference between East and West hockey. There's just, you know, fine hockey played both ways, and it's just that they have won the last five. I'm sure that a lot of people will say the American League is still as good as the National League in spite of winning the All-Star game. But yeah. And I think it's the same way here. Uh, you know, we've proved that we can play with the best, and uh, certainly we've proven it this year. Well, Jim Craig apparently is all right. Number 30 is back in the cage. We're going to go back at it. Uh, Craig apparently got a puck in the throat that's the one that bounced off the check chest protector it must have it came up into his throat he uh, experienced some dizziness some smelling salts applied Jim Craig is all right and back there at work that's when that puck hit the uh, post there that time right after that shot back out to center ice and the Terriers are gonna just charge right back into the attack Miller tries to set it up it goes through the crease and now the Eagles move it out to center 5.15 remaining in this game in regulation. Barrett goes behind the cage, swept away by Craig. There's a setup attempt off the wing board. Now it's Ewanowski, and it comes through again. Eagles trying to keep it in. Can they do it? No. Mullen feeds it out to center right. Darryl McLeod breaks in three on one. Mickey Mullen, he fires. That comes over the top. Back along the wing board. Now it's the Eagles. A little end to end run going on here. 4.49 remaining in the period. Boston College moves in. Lambie picks it away on the board. Look at that. Miscue by the defense. Ewanowski there. And play has stopped. Two Terriers cut down. Jack O'Callaghan went down. Uh, he had but a there was a whistle before that. Uh, we couldn't hear it with the crowd because there's a penalty. There's a penalty of Paul Barrett. Barrett goes off. Of course, we were looking at uh, O'Callaghan and Darryl McLeod who cut each other down, which was kind of interesting. So the whistle blow... And no penalty for cutting your own guy down. Paul Barrett goes into the box for two minutes for high sticking at 15-18 of this, the third period. 
and Boston University gets the power play advantage. That's surely not what BC needs. No, BU's had a uh, few opportunities. They had two three-on-ones uh, in the last few minutes. And you can see BC's trying to take a few more chances in the offensive zone with their defense from crashing, but you know that's the price you have to pay to give those uh, three-and-one, two-and-one opportunities if you're going to do that. John Bethel is in the zone off the left wing board now, watched by Adi Tommaso. Brings it back to the left point, right point, it's LeBlanc. LeBlanc tries to feed Fiddler, broken up and out of the zone. Four minutes and 23 seconds left. Back up on the left now. Driven in by Bill O'Neill. He's from Danvers, Massachusetts. Back along the wing board and bang back out. All the way into the BU end. A minute and 30 seconds left in the power play for the Terriers now as the shorthanded Eagles try to get something going. Sweetai charges Silk. Buck comes up on the left side. And again, it's Boston University in the breakout. Here's Fiddler. Drops it back for Silk. Silk comes up through center. Dumps it in. It swings behind the net. There, Skidmore slows it down. And it's out of the zone. Terriers are going to have to clear. Here's LeBlanc, number 15. He's uh, from New Canaan, Connecticut. They'd like to score now, but I think their, their prime concern is not to give away any uh, cheap goal here on the power play. Uh. Well, we're down to 50 seconds uh, on the penalty to Paul Barrett. And the Terriers will give it another shot up ice. Well, time's a wasting on this man advantage. Closing. And having a little trouble maintaining the skate. Silk was there to help out. Couldn't do it to LeBlanc. Left point O'Neill. Drive down the pipe. And that's cleared. Skidmore stopped it on the stick. Back into the BU zone. And we're down to 25 seconds left now on Barrett's penalty. Again, Boston University coming through. No chance for Bethel. He, as a matter of fact, is knocked down. Coming over the blue line. Driven in by LeBlanc. That's moved wide by Skidmore, who was uh, just out of the net for that one. And it's cleared again by the Eagles. They've just about done this penalty in. Matter of fact, it is all over. Two minutes and 39 seconds left now in the game. Lambie on the charge. Fiddler feeds Silt. There's the drive. Knocked down right in front by Augustine. Silt charging the puck. Can't keep it. Along the wing board now. Jones. Bill Army. Army feeds it out to right. Off the wing board. We got a break coming in on this one. There's a shot. Save Craig. And on the follow by Rob Riley. It was stopped again. Well, there you that's have the breakaway. That's an outstanding save thing. right there. That's a, that's a big play. That's a big play in this game. And, of course, he couldn't have come against a better player uh, than Joe Mullen. And... Uh, well, it's a money save for Jim Craig. No question about that. Wow. There it is. That would have been 5-4 with two minutes to go. and uh... Certainly time. Well, we'd like to say hi to the folks in Watertown, New York, at WNPE, University Park, Pennsylvania, WPSY, here in Providence, Rhode Island, WSBE, in Binghamton, New York, WSKG, in Scranton, Pennsylvania, WVIA, in Rochester, New York, WXXI, of course, you folks in Boston, WGBX Television carrying this game. Hope you're enjoying it. And for you folks in Cincinnati, Ohio at WCET, thanks for being with us. Bill Army, number 16, on the draw for BC. Buck came back. He saw the misfire on the shot. Now the Terriers are on the break. Hetnick, he went right over the top. Strike one. Didn't get a piece of that rubber at all. There's a drive. That's by O'Neill, and it's wide. Comes back along the wing board. Popped out to center ice. Terriers... Trying to press it here, and Hetnick picks it off just inside his own line. Feeds it off on the right. Coming up is Bob Wallow on his off wing. Wallow goes into the zone. It's offside, and they'll bring it out for the draw. Well, that's a that's a bigger save than I think most people realize at this uh, point in the ball game. Uh, Jimmy Craig has uh, played that way all year long. You know, he has come up with the big save when BU has made it. Uh, uh, early in the season, uh, Brian DeRocher was playing, uh, well, they were alternating, and uh, I think in the latter part of this season, uh, Jimmy has played exceptional hockey, and Jackie Parker has al uh, altered his uh, uh, rotation a little bit and has gone with uh, Jimmy Craig uh, the majority of the game lately. Well, we're into the final minute and a half now as Bobby Hare moves down the left wing board, drops it in behind the net. Barrett tries to set it up. Can they keep it? And they do. Augustine, cranks, fires. Stopped out in front. Here's Boileau. Bringing it out on the right now to Mahar. Intercepted. Eagles coming back at him. 5-3. You know, they're not going to play like it's all over here. They still have got to play and will play like they've got a chance at it. 
And of course, we saw them score two goals within 15 seconds last night against Bowling Green as part of their offensive effort to get into this tournament. They've pulled their goaltender, Paul Skidmore, and have put the extra skater on the ice. They're now going to force the issue up front. They're bringing half out. A dozen. They're bringing their extra skater out there now, and of course they've got the best face-off man, Billy Army, out there to get the draw. Putting that extra forward up. And what they're trying to do is get that draw back to the point. So actually, Joe Mullen now is standing right behind Army. All right, Bill Army, number 16, will take the face off for the Eagles. You Pressure's can see them on. trying to... Both of them are cheating pretty well. David Silk and Paul Barrett, uh, both trying to get that advantage. Mark Hetnick, number four, is taking this face off for Boston University in his own zone. Now they're putting Joe Augustine up behind... Uh, behind Army. You can see Billy Army's a left-handed draw, so it's much easier to get that draw to your backhand, John, than it is your forehand. And what they've done is put Joe Mullen on the other side to defend against those uh, BU players who are coming out to... Uh... We uh, see O'Callaghan jump on that puck. His stick is still now laying in the center ice circle. He came over and jumped. You heard the crowd... Uh, well, you're not supposed to fall on the puck intensely, but, yeah, but you know, that's, that. a, that's a hard thing to call. He was falling on it, and Oh, I've watched it called this year. Well, I have twice. I've seen that called in a defenseman. Oh, it has been called. There's no doubt. Uh, but you're right. You know, frequently it isn't. Matter of fact, more frequently than it is. Watch David Silk now. You see how he's cheating into the circle. You're supposed to stay outside that circle. There they go. Barrett and Silk. Uh, and Barrett, is <laughs> Barrett is just as persistent. He's not going to let Silk out there. And that's his job now. His job is to, to keep Silk from getting out to Joe Augustine. Well, they try. Augustine shuffles it up. There's Army. He shoots. That's a great save. It pushed away again as Mullen came roaring through. Loose puck. Picked up by BU. One minute left in this hockey game. Puck comes back to center ice. No goaltender for BC. Remember, Skidmore's out. Six skaters up. Here's Army. Army for Barrett. Barrett in the zone. He loops one. Craig stops. Flips it off to the left. John Bethel heads it back to the point. Kept in by the Eagles. Oh, no. Still stole out and took the puck out of the zone. 38 seconds. BU closing in an open net. Augustine tries to get over. Poked away. Back outside the zone. 30 seconds left in the game. There's a the shot. Score. The open net by O'Callaghan. From about 15 feet behind the blue line. And that just about does it. I guess that does it, John. Uh, BC had a couple of golden opportunities just prior to that. And... Uh, somehow I don't know how that puck stayed in. No goal. They're waving it off. I think it was an offside on it. Okay. The play was offside. There was a BU player in there. Well, I looked down and saw that the red light had not gone on, but remembered that last night the goal judge did not put it on on a goal. Said he missed again. The only trouble is the goal judge is not the final word. They can put all the lights on they want. It's the referee that's the final word. That's absolutely true. To the chagrin of some, and then it comes off the backboard. It's uh, going to be all the way back into the BU zone, and the Terriers don't like that. Dick Lambie still job owning, and so is O'Callahan. There's only 15 seconds left in this they're, whole ball game. They're complaining that it hit a stick, a deflected stick, which would have nullified the icing. What BU wants to do now is just get the puck out into center ice before they shoot for that open net, because if they miss the open net, it's an icing giving them another opportunity at a face-off in the BU end. Okay, here's Army, number 16, back to Augustine, drive, save, Craig, picked up by Barrett, trying to center it. Ewanowski drops it into the corner, we're down to nine seconds. Boston University, two goals away. There's a loose, bouncing puck all the way back into the BUN. The game is going to end on this note, folks, because they'll bring it back for a face-off in the Boston University zone on icing against the Terriers with only three seconds left in the clock, and Boston College trailing five to three. Again, O'Callaghan shot from center ice was disallowed as a goal on an offside here's Army trying to get it back now the point out of the zone time runs out off the draw that's it Boston University has become the national champion they have won the national tournament here at the Providence Civic Center 5-3 over Boston College 
And you can see the jubilant Terriers now surrounding their goal. Well, it's a fitting end, John, to a great year for Boston uh, University. Uh, certainly, if any team deserved it, Sam, uh, very difficult to go through any year and only lose one game, and they did it. And uh, believe me, they, they, they played an outstanding game here tonight. When they, when they put their skating shoes on, believe me, it's difficult for any team to beat them. And they have every right to be pleased. They've worked hard for it. And they're a very worthy recipient of this year's NCAA championship. Well, the goals came for BU on the power play in the first period from Fiddler and from Mullen. Let's see now. It was also Silk scoring on a power play. In the uh, first period, it was 3-2 to two after one. Uh, Bobby Hare... A picked up a goal. We should say Mullen scored. That was a BC goal in the power play. It was Mullen, and of course there's a Mullen playing for Boston University as well. Mickey Mullen and uh, Joe Mullen for Boston College. He had the first BC goal. So it was Mark Fiddler, Silk, Tony Mar, and uh, Tony Mahar scoring with uh, Hare and Joe Mullen scoring for BC in that first period. In the second period, Tony Mahar got his second goal of the night. That proved to be the game winner at 7.05 of the second period. It made it 4-2. In the third period, Fiddler scored for Boston University. Barger got one for Boston College. It looked as though that was uh, going to perhaps stimulate the Eagles and get them uh, a little bit tighter into the hockey game, but it was not to be. Mahar's goal proved to be the game winner, and of course it was. In fact, a victory for Boston University. They are now the national titleist, and you can see Coach Jack Parker along with his young team. And maybe we can uh, have a chance to see some of the scoring activity. They're pretty and excited how group it of here. Uh, young men out there, and they have every right to be. There's the first goal on a shot by Mark Fiddler right early in the game. The second place. That was on a power play in the first period. Well, we look at the next one, we'll see Joe Mullen, the Boston College Mullen. Yes, tipping a puck on a shot from the point by Joe Augustine. Okay, here we go. Boston College getting their There's first There's a shot, goal. and Joe Mullen's going right in front, redirected the puck, and went right through Jimmy Craig's leg. Right, that was uh, Joe Augustine who blasted the shot from the left point, number three. Joe Mullen was right out there to redirect it past Jim Craig. And, of course, it tied the game at one. Then it was Boston University with another goal and this effort. This is the one, no, where there was a little oh, bit of yeah. miscommunication on the part of Dick Lambie and Jimmy Craig, and they failed to clear the puck, and Brian Hare came in and... So Hare gets that goal, makes it 2-1. to one. This is where Boston College jumped out in front of BU and had the Terriers starting to scramble a little bit to get back into the hockey game. Well, they did to, that. <laughs> I keep wanting to say Brian here. It's Bobby here. Here's a shot by David Silk. So Dave Silk from O'Callaghan tied the game at two. And uh, Boston University was not to be stopped then. They finished the first period with a 3-2 lead and they did it on this play. There's a great play by Dick Lambie where he anticipated uh, the puck coming out of the zone, put it over to Tony Mahar, and there he is on a backhander beating Paul Skidmore to the near side. All right, now it's 3-2. to two. Boston University's out in front. That's the end of the first period of play. We went into the second period of play, and what proved to be the game winner was then authored by the same Tony Mahar who scored goal number three. This is a great play by Bob Boyle. He doesn't shoot the puck. He, he goes around the net, has Paul Skidmore out, and of course the trail man was Tony Mahar, and he just came in and had an open net. It was an easy goal for him, but Bob Boyle made the play. In fact, he made a great play keeping that puck in as he came across the blue line. Okay, well that proved to be the game winner. Uh, after that, the third period, a goal to Mark Fiddler kind of put the icing on the cake. We then had, of course, Barger's goal for Boston College making it five to three. Uh, here's a look now at Fiddler's effort. Here's Mark Fiddler going in. If you recall, Skidmore has already beaten 
three or four BU players who tried to deke him, and Mark just didn't bother to do it that time. He just shot that puck right up into the upper corner. Sign of a great goal scorer. Oh, he's been a marvelous goal scorer. As a matter of fact, 30 <laughs> goals so far this season. And the final goal was a Boston College goal. That was the one scored by Barger. There was a bad play coming out. <laughs>